Look at the size of that bat! You're watching a Fox Sports presentation of BASS. Well, good morning to you, and we are ready to go with the third round of competition. This guaranteed great Bass Master Elite at the Santee Cooper Lakes in South Carolina. Stop number three for the Bass Master Elite Series. 47 anglers have qualified to fish this round, hoping for 10 spots in the final. They're on their way. Some of them set up and getting ready to begin fishing. There's your rules of the game. And Mark Zona, as we look at our rules of the game, every day's been different here. And we've even got a different day to do round three. So uh, we got to reset hey, everything. It's... Certainly has been, Tommy Sanders. What's at stake here at Santee Cooper Lakes? Well, a really, really cool Bassmaster Elite Series trophy. And you're looking at about $100,000 and a little monkey wrench thrown into the game this week. We are only, this is usually Championship Sunday, not the case. Really, we will decide that tomorrow here in Santee Cooper Lakes. We are only at halftime. And when you look at that leaderboard right there, you say, wow, Drew Cook, absolutely in control which he has been about a seven and a half pound lead which is absolutely not safe on this body of water absolutely. yeah we take a look at the weather there looks very beautiful this morning the reason for the cancellation or postponement of round three from yesterday today there's some footage from yesterday as we look at our th marine weather watch out wind was the main concern as it should be on a body of water this side absolutely right Tommy wind was predicted 15 to 30 miles per hour and that was definitely the case from midday on yes yesterday safety first for all of our anglers picking up the pace again here today once again Drew Cook with a big big lead to start this day but how long will it hold up Dave Mercer earlier at the weigh-in dude that was um, happy with three days uh, I mean no not really I wasn't happy with it I mean I wish I mean, obviously it worked in my favor if it was a three-day thing, but uh, I just kind of wish it would have stayed the same. Um, a, lot of, a lot of people were on the way up here that had to turn around to go home, and now they're not going to be able to make it because it's Monday. But, you know, we still have the opportunity at 100 pounds, and, and that's, you know, not a bad thing on this place. Uh, hopefully yesterday, um, you know, the, the, the fish didn't get beat on too much, and I still think there's going to be, be more moving up. And if there's more moving up and we can do our job, I think we'll have a, a good tournament. You've had an incredible Elite Series career, and it's hard to even believe that it's so young in your career. When we're talking about you, we're like, it feels like he's overdue for a win, and you're so young in your career. You've had an incredible career and been in the top 20 for Angler of the Year every year, only been out of the top 10 once, and that was the top 20. How bad do you want this? I mean, dude, I want it so bad. I've uh, I've been super close, you know, five or six times, but I've I've always shot myself in the foot on day one, so it's so hard to to you know catch back up. And obviously, we we didn't do that this week. And you know, this is the best opportunity I've ever had. So if it's meant to happen, it's going to happen. If it's not, it's not. That's just kind of the way I'm looking at it now. I'm gonna try to do everything that I can control and let the chips fall where they may. Well, the leader Drew Cook to start this day, almost 32 pounds on day one, Mark Zona. That speaks for what kind of place, what kind of incredible playing field we have here. Absolutely right, Tommy Sanders. Looking at your Minn Kota, unlock the lake. Lake Marion, Lake Moultrie, Santee Cooper Lakes. And here's the best way to put it. Probably one of the big, best big bass factories that we will see all season long. Really, the major player this week has been Lake Marion. The one thing that you heard Drew Cook say right there, I hope they didn't get beat on bad yesterday while all of our anglers were off the water. Here's the best way to put it. Santee Cooper Lakes is one of the most popular bodies of water this time of year. A lot of local pressure. That will be a factor here today, guaranteed. Well, we will watch it all play out this morning. We've got live coverage. Of course, these guys will be fishing for eight hours today, and they've been... Uh, Started about 30 minutes ago, and now they're set up, many of them underway, including John Cox starting this day in fourth place. <laughs> there we go, baby. There we go. <laughs> oh, we put them poles down. That's what I'm hoping. I'm hoping we can start the morning, catch a few of these nice ones on the frog. There we go. That's what Z said. He said, please give us a little frog action this morning. Like he choked it. 
Oh, God. Oh. oh, he really ate it. There we go. <laughs> There's number one. He's probably three and a half, maybe. Maybe three. I don't even think the second group's blasted off yet. <laughs> oh, nothing like frog bite in the morning. Oh my gosh, give me a heart attack. I was, I was like, wasn't even, <laughs> I figured I wasn't gonna catch that until I got to that corner there, but that was exciting. John Cox, fish number one. That was earlier today. He has been relentless this season, has John Cox. Let's get over to the last angler to win here with the elites. Back in 2020, Brandon Polinick, and boy, he saved his day in the final moments on day two. Exactly right. He's been starting off really all week long offshore, five to 15 feet of water. Very special spot. Not a lot of fish, but they've been the right ones for Polinick to start the day. Not a giant one, but it'll help the cause. Come here, give me your mouth. Got a swan. It's a pre-spawner. That's what we need. Like he started his day on day one, Brandon Polinick. We're always going to be looking out for him. We'll also be in the boat all day long with Canada's Corey Johnston. Starting this day in sixth place. start the day. Take them. Like it. Mm, you could tell. Corey Johnston definitely ready for a party here today. Said he's got 10 really good ones locked on. And that's what you're going to hear here on FS1, fish that are spawning. A lot of guys that are visibly looking at these bass. And most of the anglers in the top 10 said a big, big wave pushed up sh shallow late on Friday. Corey Johnston's starting off right here, semifinal Sunday. There we go. Take that. First 10 minutes of the day. I like it. Rick Johnson with a good, solid start to his day. If he can keep that pace up, he will be a handful. The rest of these anglers. He's 47 out here shooting for 10 spots in the final. Let's get over to ninth place to start this day. Had a great Academy Sports and Outdoors Bassmaster Classic. The angler from Oklahoma, Luke Palmer. Yeah, Luke Palmer with a monster second day of this tournament, just under 27 pounds. This was earlier today. He has a set of trees that he did major damage, not looking at the bass spawning. Said a lot of these fish are just, just coming into this area. Yes. Yes, like more. That feels good now. I thought that was a gorilla. When I hit her, she didn't move. And I will take her. Thank you, Lord. There we go, number one. Yes! I could see her sitting there on that tree. Whenever I pitched in there, I, yeah, I, I normally, I've only been making like one or two flips in on stuff. And she, uh, a little woolly bug. She, uh, 
she kind of nosed down on it the first time, but she wouldn't eat it. I need to start like that. It's a good feeling right there, man. <laughs> I thought it was a giant though. I mean, I hit her because I guess she's down in that grass. I thought we was about to see a six or seven. I ain't gonna lie. I was like, finally, no big girl showed us to play. Whew. We didn't blank. That's a plus. Angler from Colgate, Oklahoma, fishing with a lot of confidence these days. Very happy to be in the top 10, get his shot at the final. Ditto for Caleb Kufal, a huge day one for him, just under 30 pounds. Exactly, but a brutal day two, only catching four bass right around the corner from Luke Palmer with Caleb Koo falling out. Not catching a lot, but they have been the right one so far. There's number one. Come on, buddy. Eight, eight, eight. right there for Kufal. And one of the things looking at Kufal and Luke Palmer, the biggest key is the deepest trees. You look at those cypress trees, everything looks the same, but under the water, the number one key for both of these anglers, three to four feet of water so far for their bigger bites throughout this event. And those really are two bass you do not want to take to the way and reason being basically seven out of our top 10 on Friday had over 25 pounds for five bites. He's there. It's got to be 14 inches, these large mouth bass. 14 inches. To go into the live well and be brought to the weigh-in. As, as you pointed out, Mark, some of these are not the ones you want to no. end the day with by any means. Let's get over to Brandon Palnick again. Started the day second place. But a good margin behind our leader, Drew Cook. Yeah, and this has been a really yeah. key area. Just a little funneling spot. If you look over Polinick's shoulder, there's been a lot of big bass caught shallow around him. But every day he's been able to catch either one to three bass off this area, but they have been ones that have stayed in his live well. Stay on there. Stay on there. It felt like I had big head shakes. Oh, it's a big one. You and that OG Slim up here. Yeah! Yeah! Maybe we just had to make a little change up. Dude. Maybe we just had to change it up a little bit. Oh, thanks, little OG. I love this been tied up in my rug for a while. Okay. 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 Told you it was a big one. Come on. Come on. I even got her over here for you, Dalton. Yeah, it scared me too. I was like, there's a lot of bad stuff back there. But she just kept swimming that way, just kept swimming that way. Oh, 
I knew those were bass out there, just like last time I was here. Trust your electronics. Oh my goodness. Whew. Okay, let's get to business. Let's get to work. Get, there, there's another one. Doesn't feel little. Back to back. Oh, he's not a giant. It. I mean, choked it. It's gone. I mean, it's gone. <laughs> That's how you know we made the right change. Mm hmm. That's how you know we made the right change. Yeah, mixing it offshore <laughs> and fishing shallow oh throughout God. that event a year and a half ago. And Get really, the, one of the things that you saw with Polinick on day two on Friday this week is basically that spot where he is catching them this morning. He only got one bite there on Friday, but he said, man, I've got to recheck it. The reason being that offshore deal for him, he said it is a potential 25 to 35 pound Dude, spot that he saw. Giant, Definitely giant. those oh kind gosh. of numbers in practice, kind of mixing in a lot of that same recipe this time around that he did when he held that trophy back in 2020. Six-time winner the with the Bassmaster Challenge, the Progressive Bass Angler of the Year, Brandon Pollard. Definitely part of the conversation. Well, that's pretty <laughs> much what we wanted to see, Tommy Sanders. The yep. problem that Drew Cook is going to have, basically us starting the third quarter, is guys like Brandon Polinick, guys like John Cox, a Greg Hackney. Well, they're guys that know how to catch up. They're guys that know how to win Bassmaster Elite Series tournaments. And that's how Drew Cook goes from a seven and a half pound lead to a five and a half pound deficit in the space of about so 20, 25 minutes fishing time. That's how volatile this place is. Look at the unofficial wow. standings as it is right now. Look at that Polinick on top. Corey Johnson and Cox, we saw them both with good keepers in the boat. Man, oh man, it looks like they're biting today. The semi-final round, day three competition with the guaranteed rate Bassmaster Elite at Santee Cooper Lakes. We will take a quick break and be right back. The guaranteed rate Bassmaster Elite at Santee Cooper Lakes is sponsored by Hummingbird, Mercury, Nitro Boats, and by Bass Pro Shops. Well, uh, today kind of went as planned. Ended up weighing 26 pounds. I did not get as many bites as I was hoping for, but I got the right quality of bites early on. I have no idea how the rest of this week's gonna shake out, but thankful to get a good start. That's what you need here. Uh, the crazy part is 26 pounds doesn't even have me in the lead, but definitely a good start this week. Pretty hard to beat Clarendon County when you got that many big bass swimming around in here. So here's to uh, getting back out there, making day two. I still need to catch a dirty 30. I'm yet to catch a dirty 30 on the Elite Series. I feel like this is the week to do it. The action, live action. Day three of the guaranteed rate Bassmaster Elite. The semi-final round here from Clarendon County, South Carolina. And Brandon Polinick, you heard him. I'm not getting a lot of bites but he is getting the big ones when he does get them. Very, very patient, and patience pays off as he now assumes the lead after coming back from a seven and a half pound deficit to start this day. This happened already. BMC on point. Well, I think at this point, we're gonna give that to Brandon Polinick. Take a look again at what has happened early this morning. Very reminiscent of day number one when he loaded the boat with three giants as the rest of the anglers were still motoring on their way to get to their fishing spots. Brandon Polinick with this solid keeper to start his day. 
Said he had to try this spot again. This is where it went down on the <gasps> And then. <gasps> Thanks for love, G. Hello. Five down plus, maybe gone. closer to six oh, pounds for that gone. one right there. The three in the boat, and all of a sudden, he is your leader. Let's get back out on the water with Brandon Polinick. Fantastic start. Talk about his lack of bites during the day. If you start with three right off the bat, you don't have to back it up a whole lot. Well, it's been a little bit closer to what it was like on morning one. I think that little bit of weather we had yesterday and uh, the colder morning we had <clears throat> set a few more of these fish up. And we've got a good start. We got one that I would like to take back to weigh in and two that I'd like to get rid of and we'd have a really big bag. But uh, even, even if we got to take those ones, it'll be good. We've made a little change up and that's been the key so far this morning. Uh, I've been catching a lot of these fish on a jerk bait, switched up to a little Rapala OG Slim. And it just, I, could, I kept seeing fish on my Mega 360. I kept seeing them swimming around on the live. And they just looked like bass. I mean, I've seen enough on my electronics before and felt like I needed to make a change. And uh, pulled this OG out and they went to biting on it for a, for a little bit. I had one on my first cast, lost it, caught a big one, neck, and then next cast, caught another really good one. And then I ended up hooking another one and lost a big one. So there's, there's definitely fish around here. Gives us a good start. Hard parts is, it, they just come and live. Polinick really the only one that's utilized fishing offshore in this area of the lake, the Potato Creek area of Lake Mary. And, and really, we've only seen him catch three bass at most. We got to see that on day number one in the first 15 minutes. Little isolated pieces of wood and call it four to six feet of water. Polinick said if he could get three or four bites there today and then go shallow, looking for him spawning and that's exactly what we got to see him do on friday catching two giants in the last half hour of competition friday afternoon he's three for 13 now he catches the next keeper that's the average of that he's pretty much equal to what he did on day number one let's take a look right now brandon polonica as you might imagine he seems to always be right in the thick of it in progressive angler of the year points very very important as we reach the the end of the first third of our season here, but it's John Cox through the course of this tournament who has ascended to the top. David Mullins of Tennessee came in here with the lead, and there's Brandon Polinick right behind him. Good, tight points race. Absolutely, and Brandon Polinick, pretty much the only reason he bass fishes is to win tournaments, and he said, man, if I could just chip into that lead that Drew Cook had early this morning, if I can knock that down to about three or four pounds, I will have a solid chance at winning this event. John Cox start the day with a frogfish that obviously delighted him. There we go. Oh, come on, baby. Oh. Come here. Come here. Oh, no, not back there. Come here. Ah, uh, oh, he's a keep. Got him on the jerk shad. Straight fire line. 
<laughs> oh, I love that. All right, that's the male. The female came up and nipped at the frog, but didn't get it. But we'll see if we can throw in there and get her. Keeper right there for John Cox. And one of the things that he said is this area that he's in is very, very close to our takeoff. And there is a ton of bass like that. But the males in this lake pretty much that we've got to see all week long are between three and four pounds. And John Cox said he laid eyes late on Friday on a few of those Santee Cooper Lakes giants, a few that were between seven and what he estimated at 10 pounds. Two in the live well for Cox. Big fish hunter Chris Saldane with a six pounder, our biggest one of the morning so far. Drew Benton's climbed into our top 10. He's got a five pounder and a four and a half pounder. A little better one. Oh, not really. <laughs> Thought it was a better one, but it wasn't. All right. Hey, at least we're putting some in there. I wonder if with that, the cooler weather might have kicked them females off just a hair. get a good look at that little stop sign that Brandon, Brandon Polinick is fishing today on our Humminbird bird's eye view. And really most of his competition in this area of Lake Marion is up against the bank. Polinick, the only one that's been starting offshore and really he'll only fish this area for about, well, if you looked at what he did on Friday, he was only here about an hour and then slid up shallow. And really Polinick said the best thing about this spot offshore and that's all relative i mean in this lake right now offshore is only about five feet of water he said it's a perfect stop sign for fish that are coming into spawn and fish that are just getting done and leaving these little shallow water bays again polinick our leader with 13 pounds three ounces unofficially Drew Cook, our leader, still not registering a keeper on the leaderboard as yet, but that was the same case on day number two. He kind of has to wait what he's doing until the sun gets a little higher in the sky so he can look at him and work his magic. So we'll see if that is in the offing. As we continue, we'll be back momentarily. Whoa! Look at the size of that bass! Live coverage of the Guaranteed Rate Bassmaster Elite at Santee Cooper Lakes is sponsored by Rapala. Today on Fox, the NASCAR Cup Series heads to Atlanta for a battle on the new track. See what driver will rise up and take home the checkered flag. The engines fire for the Folds of Honor Quick Trip 500 today at 2.30 Eastern on Fox. Not too far from where we are right now. Oh, yeah. Cooper Absolutely. You now, the storm that knocked us out knocked their qualifying out yesterday, but that's they put I'm Chase wow. Briscoe. a good prediction. See, it's, yes, that's not that. yet. Otherwise, at least. I'd, I'd have your winner picked out for you. Definitely. Brandon Polinick on top. Is he going to be your winner for the second time in a row? The Bassmaster Elite Series has visited Santee Cooper Lakes. We've seen a lot of fishing between now and the end of Championship Monday. Again, the full field fishing today. He qualified for the third round. Championship will be tomorrow on Monday. And you can see that the number one area here on Lake Marion, all of your leaders pretty much within a mile of each other. And you're looking at about 110,000 acres yet. All of these guys really fishing within about a mile, mile and a half of each other and bouncing in and out of these bays. Drew 
Cook starting on a big one that he got to see late on Friday. Started on um, a couple of males. I, I obviously, I couldn't see them because it's on the wrong side of the bank. Um, and I didn't have them like actually pinpointed. So I was just going to throw around and see if maybe we get lucky with a wacky rig or just pitching up there. And uh, didn't get either one of them to bite. But um, came back to a, a female that I had marked, a big female. I lost her on uh, day two. And uh, my mark's gone. And so I guess we'll have to wait until the sun comes up. Um, Corey caught two of the other males that I was going to catch. But I finally found one here. It's a, uh, I haven't really been able to tell how big he is. I, I could just see him swimming through. Um, so we're gonna lock down on this one for a minute and see if we can't get it to bite and get the, uh, get the ball rolling today. And then we'll be able to you know, go back. Well, and that's really been the problem throughout this tournament is if you listen to Drew Cook right there, is that area has been getting throttled by a lot of your leaders and not just guys like Corey Johnson or a Clifford Perk. He's been in that same area. There's been a lot of other pressure from other competitors, a lot of locals. This area always gets pressure this time of year. Drew Cook has not been catching a lot of bass throughout his day. It is almost listen to him right there. Going to have to kind of re-rack and start over here on semifinal Sunday. out on that one for a while as he just informed us let's take a look at the man who starts this day this semi-final Sunday in third place Greg Hackney obviously a great day one for Hackney with yes. almost 28 pounds and they struggle a bit on day two and what was weird about day two is you know when we started Bassmaster live on Bassmaster.com early Friday morning Greg Hackney coming out of the gates firing he was not looking at them basically just fishing these shallow cypress trees up in Jack's Creek. And after that first hour, using a Strike King Rage Bug, very, very lightweight. After that first hour, man, it was a painful, painful day for Greg Hackney. And interesting, he basically is re-racking like you hear Drew Cook saying, re-racking and starting in a different area of Lake Marion today, just around the corner from your day two leader, Drew Cook. This is Greg Hackney live. We will watch him get settled in in his new surroundings for day number three. Yeah, and one of the things that Hackney said is he was not scared to pull the plug on that gig that he was doing up in Jack's Creek just for the simple fact. He said, man, the sun is really supposed to shine here today and man if i have to go look at him i i know where it's going down well wouldn't you know it is the exact area a lot of your anglers in the top 10 are at and the other thing about that happened late on friday some of those giant stringers 25 to 30 pounds they came in very very confined areas tommy like pet schlopper who was fishing down in moultrie said he caught that giant stringer 26 pounds in a 10 yard stretch Hackney looking for that first keeper of the day let's get over to Pat Schlopper the angler from Wisconsin take a look he's had a fantastic day number one or day number two and backed it up You know, the first day I had one big one I caught late in the day, and that was out deep. That was the only fight I had out deep. Um, so I started deep yesterday, caught one right away, and then I just abandoned that whole thing, and I just went shallow looking. And I went to an area that I was in in practice, and I didn't see much on beds, but there was a lot cruising around. And I got in there, and within the first five minutes I was there, I saw that I saw that one, 
and there was two other ones on the bed with it. And then I saw one between five and six that I actually ended up breaking off. And then there was another bed with three of them on it, two that were between six and eight pounds. I caught two of them. Um, so I literally sat for like four hours in that just to try to get, if I knew if I caught all of them, it'd be probably 30 pounds. And I only caught two of the big ones, but the males were three pounders too. So that's kind of how, how it happened. But it took me a long time to catch that, the biggest one. Well, the angler thing is constant. Pat Schlaber obviously knows his way around fishing for these big ones around lily pads. Had a good tournament at, at the Harris Chain, second stop of the year. Yeah, and he's actually down in Lake Moultrie right here, a little bay. Very, very, very well-known bay right here. And he said there was only one other Elite Series competitor in here who did not make the cut today. He said there was some local pressure. And that's the interesting thing that we heard. A lot of these bass that are coming in and doing their ritual this time of year, water temps have been 60 to 65 degrees. These waves of bass coming in to lock on and spawn is schlopper. And we've heard other anglers say this, that there's been fish that have been locked on beds. I'm talking about three, four, or five giants on one bed. Now, his is the biggest of the week so far, a nine pound, 10 ounce. Phoenix Boats big bass caught that at 1250. And then 40 minutes later, he caught a seven three, had 26 pound total to jump up from 25th into our top 10 at fifth. Schlopper waiting on his first one. Thank you, got it. Up live now is Clifford Burke from Arizona Angler starting his day in eighth place. He's not huge, but he's a nice one. Thought he was a little bigger. Inside the mouth. He's not huge. I thought he was bigger. But it's a start. Mm -hmm. It's a start. He had two fish about. Oh, yeah. That's. Yeah, actually, almost 27 down back to Clifford. Wow. Day number two. He's a guy who shows up when the fishing is, is the way it is right now on the Santee Cooper Lakes. But Brandon Polinick, a fast start just like he had on day number one, puts him out in the lead. With a pretty good margin. Drew Cook yet to fire. John Cox, Corey Johnston, Luke Palmer, Drew Benton all on the board as we speak. That will be right back. the size of that bass. Live coverage of the Guaranteed Rate Bassmaster Elite at Santee Cooper Lakes is sponsored by Rapala. Coverage from this, live coverage from this legendary fishery continues. Now, what if I told you that you could get deeper what? into this sport and the payoff would be cash prizes, a chance to go fishing with the likes of Davey Hyde and Mark Zona? You'd be interested, wouldn't you? Of course you would. Rapala Bassmaster Fantasy Fishing means you can get into, pick your team, and work all season long to show up your friends to make them feel the, you, your, your superiority. In picking your lash. Your lash. <laughs> As you say, Mark Zona, you put it there better than anybody. Get with it today. Get with the program. Tommy, a rumor is on the street that you are up in the 99th percentile this season. Well, have a good week this week. That is for sure. Very hard to do. Keep the balls in the air. Welcome to you. Welcome to the Bassmaster Studio, sponsored by Marathon. I'm Tommy Sanders here with Mike Such, Sue Khan, and Such. A lot to digest, but we had a day off for weather to digest it. So what's playing big in your mind right now? The 100 pound. I mean, uh, Drew Cook was so disappointed when day three was canceled. He says, I'm, it may help my odds of winning this event, but man, I was looking forward to going after 100 pounds. We got three guys who are on pace. The top three guys, Palnick and uh, Cook and Hackney. I mean, it, and John Cox just needs to average 27 pounds the last two days to get it. All right, is it going to happen, Mark Zona? 
Boy, I don't know, Tommy Sanders. It's been a, a the major problem right now is that area that Drew Cook is in today is absolutely getting hammered by other competitors. There's a lot of local boats in there. And one of the things we're not seeing is that wave that a lot of anglers saw late on Friday. Those big females get to see that in that region of Lake Marion right now. All right. Well, Drew Cook is doing that for the first two days has yet to uh, put one in the boat. But uh, as the sun rises, you would assume his vision gets better. His ability to do what he does gets yes. better. But right yes. around the corner. Brandon Polinick, who is uh, off to a fast start, 13 pounds and three ounces unofficially and the lead. And Polinick really only fishing, like we said, four to call no. it seven feet of water. And those have real? exponentially been the deepest <laughs> ones that we have seen mm -hmm. caught all week long here on Santee Cooper like Lakes. Got a bite to it. It was about 25 degrees first day of practice last Sunday for these anglers. And Brandon Polinick said these little isolated deeper pieces of cover were loaded with giants back when it was cold. And the first day of this tournament, Polinick caught three giants right there. Could not catch a five bass limit off that area and quickly realized that a lot of what he was seeing on his front facing sonar had gone up shallow, especially with a lot of the big stringers caught right around that general vicinity's fishing in right there. Oh boy. John Cox right below him there in our four box got his first fish today on a frog. Always gets uh, all us fans excited. Well, guys, it started off awesome. I mean, we started off raw and we caught a nice one, uh, and then it's kind of just been kind of stagnant. We caught a, two other small ones. Um, I, I guess maybe the weather might have kicked them off a little bit. I mean, it doesn't feel that cold, um, and it was so nice yesterday. I don't know. I don't, you know. I don't know, maybe it did kick them off a little bit, but uh, I'm not really seeing much. We're just gonna give it another minute in here and then we're gonna go move and uh, just try to find somewhere we can get out of the wind and cover some water and, uh, and pretty much just kind of start over, probably fishing all new water because a lot of the stuff we've been fishing, the wind's gonna be pounding it. So um, yeah, hopefully we'll run into some. <laughs> oh, he is having a time. Oh. He is the happy warrior, always. He really is. He is. Taking a look at his morning, starting right around the corner from our takeoff with an early frog bite with John Cox. And you heard him say, and it almost kind of feels that way with a lot of your leaders, that they're going to have to re-rack. We had a fairly cold evening in the high 40s, low 50s. John Cox with a lot of solid males but he said there has not been a presence of those big big oversized santee cooper lake females that he saw late on friday afternoon <laughs> john cox the first two events uh bassmaster elite series this year a fourth and a seventh place thus the leader in progressive angler of the year points and you're looking at Drew Cook and Corey Johnston, your bottom right-hand corner. Pretty much all they've done all tournament long has been sight fishing. And they have, they have hampered that little bay for all it's worth. So we've... Uh... We've got two okay ones in the box so far. The first two we stopped on. Um, I had a, a seven pounder there the other day that I left and um, and it's gone. I figured it would be. Um, I'm just looking at a two pounder here now. I thought I seen a, a female with it, but she hasn't came back. But, um, you know, we're just gonna keep looking today. We're gonna cover a little bit of new water and 
see what happens. It's uh, there seems to be lots of fish up, um, which is good. Just a matter of coming across five of the right ones here and um, and seeing what we can do. The the tricky part about this is you don't really want to catch the males if you can help it because that's what brings the females around and um, I'm just kind of waypointing all these males and I mean eventually a female is going to pull up so if we can you know make it to, to tomorrow um, I'll definitely come back through here check all these males again and, and hopefully there's a big female pulling up but we'll see what happens. Seen a lot of the anglers this week using a push pole, trying to be real stealthy and quiet in these lily pad fields. Corey Johnson talking about making it to tomorrow. Again, if you're just picking up with us, only the top 10 of these 47 who are left on semifinal Sunday will make it to tomorrow's championship round. Slow morning for your day two leader, Drew Cook. Drew Cook gonna, of course, when he gets a hold of the big ones, he, he generally gets the size in the boat that he needs. That's been the case so far, but every day is different in this tournament so far because the fish are moving, the weather always changing. Lots of things to have to adjust to each and every day. Who does it best? We'll see more of that when we return. Look at the size of that bat! You're watching a Fox Sports presentation of BASS. Good Sunday morning to you. Here's the great Bassmaster Elite of the Santee Cooper Lakes. This is the third round, the semi-final round. Hope it's nice weather where you are. It's beautiful here. Yesterday, not so much, but uh, today we are back on track. Let's take a look at our Falcon Bassmaster Rookie of the Year. Watch tracking those rookie points for the season long. And Jay Shakura, who came here with the lead, has fished his way out of it through the course of this tournament and also back into it. Joseph Webster, who just descended into our top ten. And Josh Douglas, who started the day with the top ten. One, two, three in that race. Yes, Tommy Sanders, Jay Shakarat, the current from Wisconsin. It is fair. It is fair to say, in all honesty, looking what he did down in Florida, what he did on Friday afternoon, catching just under 25 pounds from Wisconsin. He is the real deal, no doubt about it. Having yet another big tournament, and a good get back out to the water right now, just outside of Potato Creek. This filthy little sewer possum, Greg. Now wait a minute. Jonathan, Jonathan Kelly, fourth on that rookie list, just caught a six pounder. That's a tough crowd to run with. You better bring him if you want to be in that list. Uh -huh. I caught one. How about that? Not much of one. I don't think it'll keep. Amazingly, they kept. That's a good sign. <laughs> I caught one. It's a little buck bass. Maybe he's got a giant girlfriend. Oh, well, we got a few bites this morning. Um, starting in a new area this morning, just kind of trying to get something going. Throwing a spinner bait around. Um, water's kind of muddier in here. Got a lot of wind blowing in, and it's good spinner bait conditions for for now, at least water clarity wise. But we're going to throw this around just a little bit more, maybe get another bite or two on it 
and we'll see what happens from there. I want to hit a couple, a couple stretches that I had from the other day and see how that goes. Um, you know, we had a real slow day too, so I'm not, I don't know. We're just, we're really going to just let the day kind of work itself out and just just try to get some bites. Maybe, I don't know, maybe even do a little sight fishing this afternoon. We'll see. Try to find some on a, on a bed. But that's about it. We're just gonna, we're just gonna go fishing. Two smaller ones in the boat for Caleb Kufal, our winner last year on Lake Gunnersville. Yeah, and as he said, it was a, it was a pretty grimy day on Friday, only catching four keepers, but had a almost seven pounder in his live well. But he's been one of the few anglers in that area of the lake, him and Luke Palmer, that have made the cypress tree game work. Area got a lot of pressure days one and two. And again, the number one key with those cypress trees, whether it's been the Rocks Pond area or Utah Springs, the trees that had really the deepest water, three to four feet of water, have been the key for those bigger bites in that region of the lake. What? Oh. Peter Boat, I don't. big fish alert. David Williams, seven pound, three ounces. He's got another nice one, a 410. He's jumped from 44th into our top 10. Almost 12 pounds unofficially. Takuita with a six pounder. Big fish are starting to be caught, Z. Yeah, and what's interesting watching Kufal right here and Luke Palmer, Tommy, it's a lot like the Potato Creek area. You only, you know, you see a couple guys in the top 10 right around Utah Springs, but there's a lot of other pressure in that area right now with, you know, guys basically from 15th down to 40th place. Now, Z, is there a reason, science behind why a certain area fires and does better for our anglers? Why they catch them in one well, zone that you see that they all seem to be grouped up at times? Just area, I mean, look, it's just areas that they're migrating to. The last time we were here and really in practice, you know, up in the, the swamp, the upper end of of Lake Marion was a major player in practice, but a lot of those storms that came through blew that area out and anybody that gambled on it, well, they're not fishing here with us today. They're on their way home. Yeah. You know, I, Such, a lot of the, the guys that you're seeing lead this event, dominate this event, they really gambled where they thought they were coming to, to spawn. You know, a lot of these fish throughout practice were not, you know, actively locked on and spawning but they saw signs that they were coming. One of them's right here who had a miserable first day and one of those waves came to him on day number two. Really most of Pat Schlopper's damage was between 11 and one o'clock Friday afternoon. One baby. Okay, mellow out. Decent fish. Can't they all be first <laughs> casters like that? And this whole sight fishing game should get really a lot better as this day goes along and the lights turn on, the sun gets high. Pat Schlopper has zero Take other competitors in that bay down on Moultrie, Take but there is a lot of local pressure around him. <laughs> Got one. Got one, Dad.
I don't know if I can just get that big one I saw. That's the bat I caught the nine off yesterday and two other males. So that's a good sign if there's another male on there. Maybe, maybe old, old Billy's up there. Schlopper say that he's caught multiple fish on the same bed. And one of the other things that we've heard happen this week, which it's, you don't hear this all the time, is guys that have caught fish off beds and then came back an hour or two later and the same bed will have another three or four bass sitting on. That's, you hear a little bit of that in Florida, uh, but that's rare that you don't see that in other parts of the country. Uh, doesn't take a super big fish to get your uh, spirits up, and that was certainly sure. encouragement for him. First fish in the boat, and he's got another one uh, that he knows is around him somewhere. And I believe he made the comment after the weigh-in on Friday. Tommy, he had one bed right where he's sitting right there Friday afternoon that he caught a four, a seven, and that nine off of on one bed. Marion like more party bed. Yeah. Shallower, stumpier out here. A little bit of a different place, but uh, it would have been hard to get down here yesterday, today, to make your move. But uh, boy, you commit to Lake Mary, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Lake Moultrie, and uh, you're going to stay there all day. You're going to stay there, and you're right. It would not have been a fun ride to that area yesterday. No. is the South Carolina state record for largemouth. Is it a 14, 15, a 15, 7, a 16, 2, or a 16, 8? Uh -huh. Pretty good ones right there. Think about what comes out of this lake and a few others here in the Palmetto State. We want it for a little bit, and we'll be back to pay that one off for you. Meanwhile, our live coverage continues after these messages. Live coverage of the Guaranteed Rate Bassmaster Elite at Santee Cooper Lakes is sponsored by Rapala. The amazing Santee Cooper Lakes here in Clarendon County, South Carolina. Back in 2006, the Elite Series visited and Preston Clark shattered the existing, the standing four-day fishing record with 116 pounds almost over four days. Speaking of poundage, here's our Striker Daily Trivia question. What is the South Carolina state record? For a single large mount, is it 14, 15, 15, 17, 16, 2, or Mark Zona? Is it 16, 8? Is that the record? Tommy, it is the state of South Carolina. I got to go to the heavy side of this. I'm going to go 16, 8, D. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go one lower, 16, 2. Whoa, well, that is a chunk. Tommy. Right, oh, oh, no. Oh. Lake Marion no. here. Lake Marion, no surprise there. About the incredible history of this place. What we have seen today, Greg Hackney trying to get the engine going again on this day. Ditto for Caleb Kufal. Yeah, and you're really seeing, taking a look at a lot of this footage right here. It is going to be a day of change. <laughs> thought it was so many of our anglers really talking about that they thought a massive wave, a wave that we got to see back in 2006 that pulled up late Friday afternoon, but there is no doubt looking at a lot of the footage here today, especially a couple semi offshore fish from Brandon Polinick, that this body of water has changed in a big way. Your day two leader who has been in command of this tournament really all event long, Drew Cook still sitting on zero fish.
boy, he has locked in on this one for a long while, too. Saw him lose this bass Friday afternoon. Had it hooked for just a split second. He thought it was over seven. Yes! Yes! Why would I boat swing something like that? But give me some freaking knuckles. God. <sighs> oh gosh, that's how you get the day started right there. That's how you get the day started right there. We need four more of those. Five and a half to start the day. I'll take it. I don't think I have a camera guy out there anymore. Oh. Well, if you're going to start, you're going to start with a five and a half pounder. Wow. That'll settle the nerves for Drew Cook. Pretty much been looking at them spawning all week long and really has only used one bait this entire tournament. Big bite fighting frog going to be your Bass Pro Shop's top lures, I've caught Drew Cook. every bass but one that I've weighed in on a Big Bite Baits 4-inch fighting frog and tilapia magic. Um, that is my go-to bed fishing bait. I have made an ungodly amount of money with that bait, and uh, it is, it's the perfect bait and the perfect color for, for bed fishing, in my personal opinion. Whenever that bait's sitting down there shaking, <laughs> you and you can look at it with your eyes looking in the bed, and you'll just see a a, a ray of light come by. Whenever it hits that that sparkle just right, it's just shooting, you know, rays of light out. And that's one thing that I feel like really, you know, I'm not gonna say you can't catch them on something else. You obviously can, but I feel like I can catch them quicker with that bait and be more efficient in a sight fishing tournament because of that bait. Uh, this week it's been 100% my, my sunglasses. And these are Louisville Packouts um, in the amber lens. And that's been, I mean, I've relied on my eyes all week long. Um, being able to see them far away has, has been the key that I feel like. I've fished around a lot of boats all week. Being able to see them further away and being able to fish for them further away than most other people, I feel like really gave me a competitive advantage. The, uh, the male is, the male is actually on bed way closer than I thought. And whenever I first started messing with the female, she was further away. Um, and then I actually, the male got comfortable enough with us there and moved back onto the bed. And I was able to fire him up within like two pitches. And then she finally came onto the bed. And uh, right then she swam into the bed and my bait was on the other side. I hopped it one time real quick and it went right in front of her face and she nosed down on it. And that's whenever I shook the rod and she sucked it in and I let her swim a little bit that time. Well, he is absolutely one of the best in the Bassmaster Elite Series fishing for spawning bass. The interesting thing about that, I mean, he worked that fish for a long while. One of the things that we've watched with Drew Cook, not only in this tournament, as that sun gets higher, you know, he, he is all about efficiency as far as catching these as quickly as he can to move on and hunt another one is watch throughout this day as the sun gets higher how far he will sit off of a lot of these beds. Good, good start for Drew Cook. All right, well, we just just got our first fish of the day, first female, um, five and a half pounder. It uh, took a little while, I actually got her to bite twice, but she never did actually get the bait. So that last time, she got it that last time. Uh, the male's still here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it just a, a few minutes. Um, and if I can get the male to bite, I'll, I'll catch the male and we'll move on or might save it for later. But just cause I wanna, I need to probably look 
as much as I can um, before the, the wind gets up. But hmm. I don't know how I didn't get it right then. It blew mud come out of his gills. Hummingbird bird's eye view of that pad field that Drew Cook and Corey Johnston have utilized this whole tournament. Number one thing that Drew Cook said, man, he goes, lily pads have been the biggest key and a lot of the bass that he's put in his live well, he said they were not spawning in practice. They were in these pad fields cruising and when the tournament began, they were locked on beds. That gives you a very, very good look. A lot of these bass spawning on those lily pad roots kind of makes a little harder bottom for them to spawn on. Going to shoot back south of Drew Cook and to get back out to Caleb Kufal with a couple small keepers in his live well. Look, Palmer's been off uh, service, but he finished his limit out and jumped ahead of uh, Cook, and Cook just retook second place. Get out of there, buddy. He's looking good. Yes. I got him. <laughs> oh, man. That was, a, that was a debacle. Oh, he wasn't hooked very good. I thought he was hooked a lot better than that. It's a decent fish though. Good start. He was going one way around that tree and man, I had to do everything I could to get him out of the, that fish weighs that much. He's just six and a quarter, wow. I didn't think he was that big. That's a good fish. Wow. All right. Boom. That's cool. Six and a quarter. Man. I thought he was like five. <clears throat> I think he scarred me up on that tree, though. He was tight. He was really tight on that tree. Old school War Eagle 3 8 sound spinner bait. And boy, when you hear your line sing like that when you set the hook, you know you've <laughs> hooked mm. the bottom of the lake. <clears throat> Always amazing when we cover a tournament on Santee Cooper and you see a six pounder caught and know you have to catch four more of those. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he had an eight seven on day one when he was six ounces shy of a 30 pound bag. Well, he needed that one. He had uh, just two tiny ones in the boat. And yes. Dropped out of the top 10. Now he's right and, back in the thick of it. And, and you know what's really weird watching him? It, it's kind of like after that. you don't know when the boogeyman's going to show up on one of these cypress trees around Utah Springs. It's a very, very popular area. But a lot of these trees that Kufal has caught them on are, are little funneling areas to generally where they'll spawn on that side of the lake. And I think it's fair to say that. Huh? There goes South Carolina Santee Cooper Lake stood right there, Tommy Sanders. Powerball replay of the day, a little bit slow this morning for the Wisconsin angler, Caleb Kufal. Get a little bit of wind today, just like we had on day number one. Caleb Kufal with a giant Santee Cooper Lakes bass. And this is the one thing that we have seen throughout this tournament. As the day goes on, water tends to spike a little bit mixed with that wind. Oh, man. Caleb Kufal, 3 8 ounce War Eagle spinnerbait. I'm talking about power pole. Replay of the day, my friend. 
right. The best one we've seen today. That's cool. Caleb Kufal, Luke Cook. Absolutely. Just a few minutes ago, finally getting on the board with another good one. A little bit smaller than this one. The thing is starting to open up a little bit. The sun is high. Ah. <laughs> Everything's looking a little bit better right now, especially for selected anglers. Look, looking great for Brandon Pollinix since the first about 40 minutes of fishing. He put three good ones in the boat right there. Drew Cook, though, has pretty much erased that lead that Brandon carved out. Luke Palmer, which mentioned, jumped up right in behind those two. So things are moving, things are changing. We'll be right back. the size of that bass! You're watching a Fox Sports presentation of BASS. The USFL is coming starting on April 16th oh. and kicks off with an historic inaugural game as the New Jersey Generals take on the Birmingham Stallions in prime time on Fox and NBC. How about that? Absolutely big Birmingham Stallions fan, Tommy Sanders. Oh, I know. I know you are. We'll yeah. see some, some new faces and some familiar faces as well. I, that's my prediction. Exactly right. Taking a look at how this tournament has shifted this morning. Brandon Polinick almost identical to what we got to see on day number one. Catching three good ones in his little starting spot. Four to six foot of water, but it put him just in a slim margin past your day two leader, Drew Cook. Palmer jumping in there, John Cox with a solid start to his day, maintaining his position in the top 10. Get back out to our leader, Dr. Shea, Drew Cook. Chris Saldane with his second six pounders in our top 10. Good morning. So let's kind of dial in what happened there with Number Drew two. Cook. He caught the female off of that bed about 10 minutes ago. Catching the male right there. Let him run for a little bit. That is keeper number two. Probably see Drew Cook pull stakes and start to hunt now. And and that's you know like Brandon Polinick. Very, very similar to day two with Drew Cook. It was a little bit painful the first hour and a half for Drew Cook, and you're getting a good hummingbird bird's eye view of Drew Cook right there and Brandon Polinick, the top of your screen. These guys are fishing very, very close to each other all week long. Yeah, have been doing it. And look, if looking at this hummingbird bird's eye view, the, these lily pad bays, if another wave did not set up to spawn in the last really 24 hours, and if another, you know, another push does not happen today, it, it will be hard for these guys to not cannibalize each other and just wipe this area out really by the end of, of fishing time today. Only 10 of them will make it to championship Monday and just like pretty much every day, except for the case of Drew Cook and a few others, you're gonna have to figure out a little something different just to keep pace, just to hang in there, have a shot at the championship. Uh, we're still sitting on three. I'm just kind of running through a few things, trying to get a gauge on what these fish are doing after a day off. Uh, you know, we had a good start where I've been starting every day, but it's kind of seemed like they're still, they're still hot and heavy on the bank. From what I can tell, we haven't done a whole lot of looking, but not getting a lot of the bites on the offshore places. So that tells me that they got to be up on the bank. We're just kind of cycling through a few areas, moving not. That's a good one. Oh, stay down. 
Maybe there are a few offshore still. Please stay on there. Please stay on there. Please stay on there. Oh, you barely got it. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, turn your head. Turn your head. There you go. Oh, come here. Come here. Nope, nope, nope. Still a little hot. Still a little hot. Still a little hot. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Oh, don't shake. Don't shake. Don't shake. Don't shake. I don't have. Mm, okay. Boy, one more left in that deeper haunt anyway, for sure. Yeah, a little sketchy service right there with Polinick, but we've... <laughs> Look, man, he is way ahead of schedule from where he was at on Friday. He had one bass at about 10 o'clock, and he pulled the plug and went up shallow. And he made the comment. He said, if I can get, you know, three or four solid bites, which he has that. I mean, he's got four in his live well that weigh about 18 or 19 pounds right now. Going to give him plenty of time to get up shallow and look around. Get across Lake Marion right now here on Santee Cooper Lakes with Luke Palmer. Very solid morning. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Yeah. Hey. Oh my gosh, son. Oh. oh my gosh. Hey. Got a little separation in there now. Oh man, son. Hey, look at those eyeballs. You never know when you crack the whip here, boys. You never know. Oh man, thank you, Lord. <laughs> Dude, that, that's, that's insane. Obviously, probably going to put him in a lead, right, Such? Fish right there. No, he started 14 pounds out of the lead, so if he's got about 19 pounds and uh, Palmer has uh, decent bags so far today, it's close. It's getting tight yeah. up there in the top three. <laughs> it's getting tight at the top. That's, that's the good biggest thing, thing is he has a lot of room to move, and really, Tommy, he saved his event. He started on the upper end of Lake Marion that was blown out from all of that rain on Wednesday, salvaged it, moving on the south end, bottom end of Lake Marion. Yes, I'm sorry, Friday would have been. Friday afternoon and very strong stringer right now for Luke Palmer. And you, you feel like this area of the lake, looking at what Caleb Kufal, he's just around the corner from Palmer. A lot, of, a lot of these outer trees leading into these spawning bays starting to reload on the south end of the lake. Yeah, more than one way to get the job done, absolutely. Look for Luke Palmer to move up that leaderboard some more. Brandon Polinick now in second place. And Drew Cook having regained his lead there. So things are changing very, very quickly. You just got to land at the top 10 at the end of today. We'll be right back.
The Guaranteed Rate Bassmaster Elite at Santee Cooper Lakes is sponsored by Minn Kota. Power Pole. Skeeter Boats. And by Rapala. Semi-final Sunday here. The Guaranteed Rate Bassmaster Elite at Santee Cooper Lake here in Clarendon County, South Carolina. Brandon Polinick trying to do something that's very difficult to do. The last win he's had with the Bassmaster Elite Series was right here about 19 yes. months ago. He's trying to win consecutive tournaments on the same body of water. And that's very difficult, but he is the man with the lead right now. He's knocking on the door of 20 pounds. Ditto to Ditto for Luke Palmer, who just moved up into the top three. So we have got some guys who have got it rolling in definitely the right direction this morning. No doubt about it, Tommy Sanders. Taking a look at Brandon Polinick so far this morning, doing damage. Semi offshore, really about four to eight feet of water, utilizing all of his front facing sonar, Mega Live. Way ahead of schedule from where he was at on Friday morning. Yeah, he fell way down the standings. He hooked up. I don't know how big it is yet. Golly. Oh, boy. Peel and drag. Come on. Stay on there. Please stay on there. Man, it's a big one. Oh, come on. Come on, girl. Oh, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. I got her wrapped up. Got her wrapped up top of the head. That's why she's fighting so hard. Yeah! That's another good one. That makes a limit. Time to start coaling. Okay. Well, that is really the biggest headache for Drew Cook coming in a semifinal Sunday was Brandon Polinick getting five bites fishing a little bit deeper than the rest of, well, pretty much the only one that's fishing semi deep here on semifinal Sunday, five in his live well and all, all good quality. He's closing your in on marathon 25 peak pounds. Performance. Your marathon peak performance is gonna be Brandon Polinick catching one bass little bit deeper on Friday and he made the comment I have to keep it honest even though his two biggest on Friday afternoon came up spawning in shallow water around a lot of the other leaders Polinick starting off in a big way it'll be very interesting to see how long he pushes this bite making small bait changes from a suspending jerk bait to a small crank bait isolated wood little stop signs as brandon polinick calls it fish funneling in the spawn or out your marathon peak performance by far today brandon polinick oh do it shake don't shake don't shake don't shake this right here would be fish number five for polinick's live well Here's the amazing thing. This smallest one was his first bass, just under four pounds. And Polinick made the comment, I need to catch a 30 pound bag to catch Drew Cook well on his way right now. Marathon peak performance, Brandon Polinick here in semifinal Sunday. His lead now over Drew Cook, exactly. 
the same amount that Drew Cook was leading him to start this wow. day. That is a That's great weird. Morning. That's a good morning on the water because Drew Cook's lead was big. But as you pointed out at the top of the show, Mark Zona, it, not safe. It was just big. No, and you know how we've covered Brandon Polinick. We've covered him here on FS1. When he smells a chance to win, he will go for it. Going to get around the corner, just around the corner from our takeoff up in Talk Hall with John Cox, who also started off very quickly here this morning. Got him. Oh no, oh no, we want you to run this other way. We want you to come out here. Oh no, come on, come on, come on, oh no, come on. There we go, there we go, it's number five. All right, not a giant one, but they, Not a giant one, but it's a fish. Gosh, he swallowed it. Got him on the Maxent General there, right there. Thought I got a couple of them big ones on the other day too. Oh, I love that bait. Love that bait. Mostly I've been, I've been sight fishing, flipping. I caught like one on a frog, um, but mostly sight fish. A lot of big ones who came sight fishing. Um, one I was throwing, I was throwing the, uh, the new Shape 10, uh, 108 Berkeley came out with. I was flipping that on like 30 pound braid uh, with a uh, like quarter ounce weight. And I was kind of into the pads and stuff when I couldn't see in the morning around where the beds were. Uh, and then once I could finally see them, I went down to the smaller size, uh, the three and a half uh, Shape 108. And, uh, you know, would, would pluck them off the beds. It, it would, it would be, it would be the most epic win ever, especially on this body of water. Uh, and it can be done. I mean, it, it's you know, you can very easily, uh, you know, you've seen some of the guys that usually catch them really well. I mean, they struggled to catch five fish. I mean, it was like that day one. You know, I think we caught six all day. Um, so I mean, you can really stumble here very easily, and uh, and you know, hopefully we will be the one running to you know, limit six pounders. Um, so, you know, this week, um, I really didn't know what I was going to do. You know, I got here a little late. Um, I was fishing another tournament, so I, I, I caught the end of the last day of practice. Um, but the weather was miserable for the guys, I guess, during the week. It was really cold. And um, so, I mean, I, I pretty much wanted to try to just sight fish. And I, I found some small males and pretty much just gonna, was going to just keep looking. And that's the cool thing about this place is, is that um, there's really big males here, so like you can you can have a really good day and catch you know 17, 18 pounds with just males. So that's what I figured I was gonna go try to find those, and if we stumbled upon a a three pounder or so or a, a big female or so, you know we'd we'd try to catch her. And that that's what happened yesterday. We we got lucky and we ran into two big ones on the same bed, and um, you know so like my game plan this morning, there was a lot of three and a halfs in here. And uh, I was just thinking, man, if I, if I could get some of those three and a halfs to start off and make it a lot easier, just trolling, looking for those big ones. Um, we, I think we got we got one in there. We kind of, you know, glad we got first thing. It's been kind of slow, but they kind of kicked off. But I mean, there's a lot of activity in here. I'm seeing a lot of them. Um, they're just not anywhere near the beds just yet. Yeah, one interesting thing, Tommy, I'm going to drop on you uh, with John Cox. Hey, he's an interesting fellow. We've covered him a lot. We've had him on the yeah. Zona show. He made a comment about something I didn't know. All of these guys, you know, they make their reservations for hotels. And you heard him saying, I came into town late for practice. And he made the comment yesterday. He said, yeah, I got in late and, you know, I just had to find somebody, you know, a room to stay. So I, uh, Brandon Lester had an extra room. I said, John, do you not 
do you not make your reservations before the tournament? He said, no, no, I've never done that in my life. I just show up and look for a room. <laughs> Somebody let me crash. <laughs> Hey, hats off, man. That's that's like the, the vagabondo. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's so university of you. <laughs> yeah, that is totally junior year. That thing was sitting. Dude, that thing was sitting right on top of the grass. Floating. Just floating there. I'm like, is that a bass or a bowfin? I flip over and just right down on my stuff. That's the way it's supposed to work. It's been a solid morning for Corey Johnston within eyesight of your day two leader, Drew Cook, and a shoot across Lake Marion right now here on Santee Cooper Lakes. Slow morning for Greg Agney. And get back out with somebody who's had a big morning from Oklahoma, Luke Palmer. This fish went in as a six pounder for Luke. Yeah, and a lot of these cypress trees, Tommy, they are cypress trees that he did not get bites in practice. Deeper trees that he said that a lot of these trees have loaded during the tournament. Drew with a six pounder, Drew Benton, got the 20 pounds fifth place. Told you, she was there. There was another one with her. This is, I'm pretty sure this is the male. <laughs> That's a decent sized male. Oh, he's gonna help. Just a little bit. <laughs> We're gonna have us a bag today. Fair to say, he pretty much already has a bag in his yeah. life. <laughs> Call it 20 pounds for Luke Palmer. I mean, Absolutely. 19-14 could very easily be almost 21 pounds for Luke Palmer. Brandon Polinick, though, man of the hour. Absolutely getting it done. A lot of what he did the job on day number one. Drew Cook still waiting for something big to happen to him. And so just, just a minute ago, Corey Johnson putting a good one in the boat. More to come. We'll be right back. You're watching a Fox Sports presentation of BASS. Live coverage continuing from semi-final Sunday here. Take a look at Josh Douglas, one of three uh, upper tier of states guys we have in our top 10 to start this day. Josh Douglas from Minnesota. We got two Wisconsin anglers as well. They know how to how to make their game travel all over the place. Exactly. Rookie on the Bassmaster Elite Series with a giant day two stringer, and he really like a lot of our leaders felt that a massive wave was pushing shallow late Friday afternoon. And Josh Douglas first trip here to Santee Cooper oh, Lakes. Okay. He had a five, seven and a six, 13, very it. late to get 28, two. Oh two. no, get out of my trolling motor. Oh my God, what is happening right now? Oh, there we go. <laughs> Heck yeah. <laughs> Exactly, Josh Douglas. We all feel that way. You. You're not quite as big as I thought, but man. <sighs> Worked my butt off for that one, man, for days. That's just a male. That's just a skinny male up there doing his thing, but at the same time, you should weigh something. Oh. You just had to do that, all that blind. All of a sudden, I'm sitting there 
tapping the line, tapping the line, and I can't feel it no more. I picked up and it started swinging off the bed. And for the last five minutes, I never left the nest. So I guess I'd take a chances and get it. All right, that's one. Just shy of four pounds, that uh, male right there that Josh got in. That's what we're guessing. And needed that. He had fallen out of the top 10. But, uh, boy, you can turn things around fast. <laughs> I like it when pandemonium breaks out in the boat, Mark Zona. Just, that's just yeah. that's what we love. <laughs> What's going on here has been the theme of this entire si yeah. semifinal Sunday <laughs> coming off of the postponement yesterday. And, really, what we're starting to see here today is a lot of the guys, though, really with really good stringers are not looking at them, not looking at them spawning where we thought – that was going to be a sight fishing beat down today. That's been a little slower. It looks like that colder night kind of has knocked that back just a bit. All right, let's bring in our colleague Davey Height right now. And Davey, it, it, it's unwinds in a different way. It seems like every day here on Santee Cooper and pretty much everywhere we go. But what, what's uh, striking you today? What's different about today? And how's that going to affect what's different at the end of the day when the weigh ins done? Yeah, yeah, Tom. It's a lot cooler out here today than than most of us expected. It's just a, a cool uh, northwest wind and, and a, a little chop on the water. Not as bad as yesterday, but a little chop on the water and makes it a little more difficult for those guys that are visually looking for those fish. But you know, it's it was unusual when Preston Clark won here. Uh, to be able to sight fish for four days in a row. This time of the year, the weather is back and forth, just like it is has been this week, and it's, it's just difficult. Someone like Brandon Polinick that's been sight fishing just a little bit, but it has been spending more time out just a little bit, a cast, a cast and a half off of the shoreline, and, and mixing that up with some sight fishing seems to be the recipe, no doubt. But it's, it's just very tough this time of the year to be able to sight fish all four days, and we're seeing that today. Davey, that area that Drew Cook has been in, and we've talked about it all day long, it has been throttled. It has been throttled the first two days of this tournament. A lot of local pressure in there. Do, does that area of Lake Marion traditionally hold up for four days more, like, you know, much less three right now? Yeah, yeah, it's a, yeah that area is it's a good area, but, but it's not one of those that, that – replenishes itself like some of the places on Lake Moultrie and some of the places on the other side uh, of Lake Marion. So uh, I, I really think the pressure is a big issue there. There's a lot of great fishermen that have been looking for those spawning fish on those same stretches, you know, now for the third day in a row. Brandon Polnick's spending time in there, but he's fishing offshore a little bit. Um, and then today, Greg Hackney, he's been spending his time uh, let's say mid Lake Lake Marion, he made a move to get away from the pressure and fish new water, and he's basically in that same area that's really been throttled the last few days. So that that area, anywhere on these lakes, these are two great lakes, no doubt, but that area is not really known to replenish like some of the others. Uh, you know, there's a few places uh, over on the other side of Lake Marion and several places on Lake Moultrie that those fish move in off of the lake, and they just keep moving in and keep moving in. But that area of where Drew Cook and uh, uh, Hackney was there today, uh, Polnick's fishing offshore, I mean, that area is not traditionally one of those places that, that does replenish. Davey, talk about real quick looking at what Drew Cook has done here today, two fish in his live well if you really look at friday it was a tough day without that seven pounder drew cook has an under you know a, a very underwhelming bag on friday what will he need to do what will he need during this event to get his first bass master victory well, he's just going to have to catch him again. He's going to have to catch him each and every day. To have an eight-pound lead, most places you say, wow, it's it's over. But it's certainly not here. He's going to have to catch 20 pounds plus every day. He's been able to do it the first two days and really gave himself that cushion the first day with having over 30 pounds. But there will be guys that catch over 20 pounds. We see a couple a couple people, Luke Palmer, Brandon Polnick, that are already there today. But there will be multiple guys that do that every day. You're going to have to have over 80 pounds, somewhere between 80 and 100 pounds, uh, maybe even a little more to win this event. So Drew Cook is going to have to catch them every day. I did talk to him a little bit backstage after he weighed in on day two, and he's got some, some different areas. I'm surprised he hasn't already made a move, but maybe he will. But he's going to have to catch them because there's other guys in, in the – the top 10 that definitely will.
Davey, thank you so much. That's a little intel we didn't know, so we, we might see a move coming up from Drew Cook. And thanks so much, Davey Hyde. Davey Hyde to, with us out there. And of course, he's, he's got a place there. He knows this lake like oh, yeah. the back of his hand. And uh, as he says, man, things are changing. The outlook for the guys who have really been beaten on their areas may be changing not for the best. And it looks like a giant lead for Brandon Pollock, which it is a, yeah. a pretty big lead. But that is something that you will see that gap tighten up quite a bit as we wear on because the first two days of this tournament, it goes down the last two hours. All right, keep your eyes on the top and also other guys like Corey Johnson and Drew Benton. We'll be right back. the size of that bass. Live coverage of the guaranteed rate Bassmaster Elite at Santee Cooper Lakes is sponsored by Rapala. Fox Corporation has donated $1 million to the American Red Cross to support their mission of providing aid and resources, including food, water, medical supplies, housing support to people in Ukraine and those who have been forced to leave their homes. You can join Fox in supporting the Red Cross relief efforts. Donate by visiting redcross.org slash foxforward 
or by scanning the QR code at the bottom of your screen. The live coverage continues here as we sort of wrap up the morning session of semi-final Sunday here in anticipation of Championship Monday. Here at the Guaranteed Rate Bassmaster Elite at Santee Cooper Lakes and Brandon Polinick. What an outstanding morning to put himself back on top of the board. Yeah, Brandon Polinick has had a huge morning, really catching more today than he did earlier in this event, days one and two. Gonna get back down into Lake Moultrie. We haven't seen much of Lake Moultrie this week, but somebody doing big, big damage on day number two. Pat Schlopper, one decent one in his live wall right now, Bassmaster Live. stay in here man there's just too much area and there's too many big ones in here all right just chill out calm down do what you'd know how to do don't run around it's another solid one man take him take that one got you over three just gotta burgle around in here until I run into five, five bills. Pet Schlopper with keeper number two right there. And just that little ripple oh God, dude. in that bay he's in. This is a little hot zone for sure. If there's not oh, one yeah. on that one, I will be absolutely shocked. Second year for Pat on the Elite Series. His best finish was uh, yeah. in our last event. Harris changed yeah. 33rd. Good job there. The good fisherman. From Wisconsin, made the comment, Tommy, his hobby is eating big ribeye steaks with no utensils. <laughs> <I> said, <laughs> <"Do> you <want?" laughs> Does he even use his hands? <laughs> Gotta be one on that thing. I think we've all done it that way. I absolutely. <laughs> we've done it together. I've seen you. Yeah, I've seen, to right. say, I've seen you do it multiple times. Oh yeah, I there fed you one at the Bassmaster Classic. <laughs> Hey, how about rookie Joseph Webster finished his limit with a six and a half pounder. He's up mm. in the seventh place. We are definitely going to see a number of 25 to 35 pound stringers like we did on Friday afternoon. And really, this system did not ignite Friday until after lunchtime. Schlopper feeling good about uh, the place he finds himself down on Lake Moultrie. He says they are crawling. Not going to leave this spot. Uh, we'll keep our eyes on Pat. That is for sure. You know, if you really think about it, Tommy, we talked about it earlier. We have seen more big ones on camera, actually, today yeah. than we did see on Friday morning. For look And really, look for a big afternoon. And I believe we have a big time guest joining us here well i yeah i think the biggest in the world of fishing bw ah. trailer hitches let's bring in the current oh reigning bassmaster classic champion jason christie uh jason I, for the nine thousandth time someone asking you this what does it feel like to be now the reigning face of bass you're the you're the ambassador for bass fishing how does that feel you've worked hard to get there you know i have worked hard and uh there's really not a lot of words it's just it's been overwhelming, um, you know, all of the people reaching out, you know, I've talked to people that I haven't talked to in five, 10 years and, and just so many things to do. You know, I've spent uh, the week between the classic and here, you know, on the phone, uh, doing interviews and just talking to people, radio. I think I've talked to every radio station in the country, but it's, uh, I love watching that. Just a, it's a great feeling, you know, and I, honestly, I don't think it's really sunk in yet until I get home and share 
you know, some of it with my kids and my family and stuff. I think that's whenever I can sit in the recliner, look up at the trophy. I think that's really when it's going to sink in. Jason, we have, you, and we got to talk about this uh, so many times. You know, when somebody wins a Bassmaster Classic, it's excitement, it's it's joy. It's it, you have made the comment to me. It was just finally a relief to hold that trophy. Um, exactly right. Um, it's just, you know. There was a time in the tournament where I, I kind of thought I had a chance to win, and you start thinking about, you know, how am I going to react? You know what? And and it caught me off guard, and, and all of what you saw on stage was just, uh, it was just like letting air out of a balloon. All of those times that I fished extra hours in preparation for that event, you know, all of the events that I was close and lost, um, it all just came to a hit and, and uh, you know, I really decompressed on that stage the first two or three minutes. We went back into the holding room there and my family and Shanna's family and, you know, there was hardly any words said because I was just sitting there just trying to, trying to catch up, you know. Jason, now we have to bring this up. You're one of the best shallow water fishermen in the history of fishing and obviously <laughs> we have a shallow water tournament right here that I'm going to let you talk about your first day of this event when we had a camera with you. Were you were you still thinking about the Bassmaster Classic or eating crab lay? What was going on that first day? <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> I'm I'm really kind of embarrassed about this event. You know, I came here. I've never been here. You know, d didn't know anything about it. And this is 170,000 acres. You know, the first day of practice, we had a 24 degree morning and I kind of knew it was gonna be hard to, you know, find an area that they were actually biting. So I spent the day looking. The second day, you know, I ended up in the area where a lot of these guys are fishing and had some bites. And then the third day, I roll in and, and things are starting to change, you know, and I knew it, but I never found that little spot or that little area that I had confidence in and, and, uh, you know, late in the day on the third day, I had some frog bites and I was just like, man, you're in the classic. This is all about trying to win. And, and I went with that. And I believe in frog fishing. If you're going to do it, you got to do it all day in order to get those seven or eight bites that you need to get that 25 to 30. And I did it. And I had the first day I had the bites to have a good bag. And then, you know, you get behind and there's only one way I know to come back and, and try to you know, catch a 30 pound bag and that's doing what I was doing. But, you know, so many people look at this and you watch this event and you think, okay, well, Hackney's in this area. You know, I can go in there and do the same things. I want to tell you a story. The second day of practice, I roll into this area where Hackney, I found out after the event where Hackney is fishing and I fished through it and I just had a feeling, I'm like, it's going to go down in here. Everything looked right. The water temperature was a little warmer than everything else. I fished through there and never had a bite. The last day of the tournament, the last 30 minutes, hour, I came in there and I'm like, I just have a feeling. I fished it again and never had a bite. And when I found out that Hackney was fishing in there, man, it just, it, it's, it's really frustrating to know that I was in the right area. I just never got confidence in a bait really and slowed down and tried to, uh, and pick it apart. Well, if you can hang with us just for a few minutes here, Jason, as we watch the fishing, kind of help us break down what we are seeing out there on the water. And, and, and Zeke, you got a question? Yeah, absolutely. And it really, Jason, after your first experience here, and we got to talk about it, you know, at, you know, after you were off the water, there, there is a, in these areas where they're getting caught this week, and really it's been about two or three areas out of that 170,000 acres, you can, these are very confined, condensed areas where these fish are getting caught. Like we're talking 30 to 50 yard stretches in a 30 mile, basically creek. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I believe what's happening right now is, you know, that first initial wave is starting to come up. A lot of the residential fish have probably locked on. Some of those have been caught, but you're having these lake fish that's starting to move in. And, and you know, I've learned over the years that there'll be one section a lot of these fish will come into and, and kind of stage or start spawning. And these guys have figured it out, that 30 to 50 yard stretch. And, and that's what happened to me. I just never figured that out. We didn't have the same conditions 
during the tournament that we had in practice. Not a lot of these fish got on bed. So, I, you know, it's kind of a guessing game to be able to, to know where they're going to come to. And I just never felt comfortable with any area. Uh, you know, and these guys are just doing, I mean, you look at Polnick and Hackney, you can tell they're confident in their area. They're settled down, and they're just, I mean, it's, it's all about getting five. I mean, five bites. It's not, you know, they're looking for five of the right ones. Jason, I'm going to rewind to the Bassmaster Classic, and we got to talk about this a little bit. You were dominant the first two days in one little drain, catching a limit, and the life was kind of easy after that where you could go boat dock fishing. Here on FS1, when that, when that aired, you pulled into that starting spot, and you caught one on the final day. What were you thinking after that? Um, here we go again. You know, you can't, I cannot have a classic with some sort of drama mixed in. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I, I pull in, you know, and I, and, and I'd been catching, you know, like you said, quite a few, but the cool thing is, is I caught one good one and I, you know, you start hearing, you know, you start having these thoughts come in your head and, you know, we were idling out and I, from looking at live scope, it was just vacant. So it was an easy decision to leave. And I told my cameraman, Jake, I was like, dude, only one. He goes, you know what? He goes, you've only weighed one or two or three out of here. You've been culling everything else. And I was like, good point, you know, and that kind of calmed me down some and, and uh, everything just worked perfect. I, did, I didn't lose a fish all week. I only catch one in the ditch, but it's the biggest one I catch of the day. And, you know, I'm just glad that I was able to look at them at live scope and, and to know that there was nothing swimming around. So it was it was an easy decision to leave. I didn't just sit there and keep fishing. Jason, man, a, a lifetime of hard work and, and, and overachieving at every step of the way has paid off for you. Your name is up there with the greatest, the, the legends of the sport. It's got to feel yes. terrific. And we, we're very grateful to you for spending some time with us today. The great Jason Christie, Bassmaster Classic Champion. 20, Absolutely. 22. One of the best Bassmaster Classics I definitely have covered with you, Tommy Sanders oh, and yeah. Jason Christie, will be one of the best champions we have had in a long time. Amazing, amazing tournament. Brandon Polinick trying to win at this place two times a row, two visits to Santee Cooper, and he's trying to win them both here and doing a very good job of it, but a lot more fishing on the way. The likes of Drew Cook has really not hit his stride today. That is for sure. A lot of the other side fishermen having a little bit of a struggle, but things can change. At any moment, we'll take a break and be right back. Whoa! Look at the size of that bass! Live coverage of the Guaranteed Rate Bassmaster Elite at Santee Cooper Lakes is sponsored by Rapala. Well, our semi-final Sunday coverage continues live from Clarendon County, South Carolina, and the Santee Cooper Lakes. The guaranteed great Bassmaster Elite. What a great place. Always ranked. Always ranked among the top, probably the top 10 at any given time in the country, year after year after year. Santee and Cooper, Cooper Rivers, which exit these two reservoirs, make their way to the ocean around Charleston and Winnie Bay. And uh, that's good fishing, too. We have the elites there as well. But we're all eyes on Marion and Moultrie this time around. And Brandon yes. Polinick trying to master them to be the one who stands atop them at the end of it all for the second time in a row. Yeah, and really, of all the places that we go to, there are as many six to eight pounders in this body of water as really anywhere the Bassmaster Elite Series visits throughout the year. And one of the big movers today, well, Drew Cook's roommate, Drew Benton, another one of the big time sight fishermen on the Bassmaster Elite Series, your Mercury move of the day. This is one of the, those lakes, Tommy Sanders, that you can make up ground in a hurry. Taking a look at Drew Benton's day so far, started just after eight o'clock, anchored in there. We've got a five and a six with a lot of room to move. Well, his move has been from 19th to fourth place. He has basically slapped him with a red right hand all day long, Tommy Sanders. Your Mercury move of the day is gonna be Drew Benton from there, we're gonna get back down to Lake Moultrie. Got that one in there for you, Tommy that Sanders. Nice. I like that, yep. <laughs> Out to Patch Lopper with three solid ones in his live well. Mercury move of the day. <laughs> I told you. 
That's the little one. Oh man, he liked that piece of food. Fighting frog, baby. Just another solid one, another three. That other one that swam by, that was, that was Bill himself, but we might have to come back. I mean, it's, another, I mean, it's almost three and a half. It's coming by. I think. That's solid. All right, keep rolling. Pat Schlopper having his best tournament ever on the Bassmaster Elite Series. And he's Absolutely. One and a half years he's been out here. What these anglers needed in the top 10, really the, <laughs> the whole field today was Drew Cook to slow down a little bit. Two fish in his live well so far. meant three now. something five even all right mm. good one right there for Caleb Kufall starting to see Santee Cooper Lakes fire and that's pretty much what's happened every day about this time all the way until way and somebody with a mess of good ones in his live well already from Canada Corey Johnston looking for his keeper fish his fifth keeper fish That little sucker. Three quarter, three seventy nine. Five. I'm over nineteen pounds on the day, up to third place. That's all right. I'll put him. Uh... Johnston, that, that, when Corey Johnston was catching him solid, 
everybody better keep an eye on him. We got her. We got her. Come here. Come here. Come here. Oh, there we go. It's one of those three and a half we needed there. Oh, swallowed it. All right. Boy, that took a while. Oh, geez, she really ate it. Oh, yeah. He's a he's a happy leprechaun, Tommy oh, Sanders. My gosh. Yes, he is. Absolutely, Thank just you. a happy he's leprechaun from his there. Work. Yeah. He enjoys his job as he should. Back over to Greg Hackney was not enjoying his job at this point yesterday so much, but he did or, or day two so much, but he did oh, manage to. I might have touched that in that the back. Day. I don't know what it is. It's about four foot long. Slow again today. That must have been what it was. Oh, at first, I was like, "Damn, it looked like a shark." <laughs> it was literally a grass carp, about 80 pounds. I must have touched it, because all of a sudden my my jig just kind of, you know, slipped while I was crawling, and I was like, "That don't seem right." Get in here! I only caught one swim in a jig. They do exist. This is one of the rarest creatures in Santee Cooper Lake. <laughs> it's called a bass. <laughs> Should get him back in the top 10, Tommy. He's fallen out. Well, only one fish, that's just second. Started the day in third place. It's a fun bite. Not quite returned to the catch rate he had on day number one. That's what he'd like to do. How wide is that? Help him out. I mean, there were literally the bass out here. That size fish everywhere. I kind of feel like a goober. Come right up, just. Greg Hackney's trying to get something bigger in the live well. That's the uh, plan today. That's the imperative today. If you want to be fishing on Championship Monday, you have to be in the top ten. You have to be on that list at the end of weigh-in time. That list is unofficial. Brandon Polinick, though, we know he has a substantial lead over our leader to start the day. Drew Cook, we just saw Corey Johnston do an upgrade there. He seems to be catching them steadily all day long. Luke Palmer fishing well, and Drew Benton, big move up into fifth place. We'll be right back. You're watching a Fox Sports presentation of BASS. Today on Fox, the NASCAR Cup Series heads to Atlanta for a battle on the new track. See what driver will rise up and take home the checkered flag. The engines fire for the Folds of Honor Quick Trip 500. Today at 2.30 oh, yeah. Eastern on Fox. I'll tell you what it's been here on Santee Cooper Lakes. It's been a grease fire all day long, well, Tommy Sanders. Has, has Starting to see... Absolutely, some big, big moves from down the leaderboard. Names that, well, we didn't see earlier this week. Guys like Drew Benton, Jonathan Kelly, Gerald Swindle making a little yeah. bit of noise here today. The size of fish, the class that lives here, big things can happen in short periods of time yeah. on Lake Marion and Lake Moultrie. That is where we find Matt Schlapper, who feels good about his decision to sort of get away from the from the crowds get down here to yeah, Moultrie. That's a nice one. Boy, in those little dollar pads you see Schlopper fishing right there has been a big player throughout this tournament. He wanted the food, big time. Did it throw? Oh my. Dude, that's a very freaking solid one. I mean, it's like 360. I mean, that ain't a bad one. 
He, <laughs> he was angry, man. Lost him, missed him, broke off on him, missed him again, then I got him. Pat getting up close to the three, uh, 13 and a half pound mark. Back to Drew Cook. Yeah, Drew Cook set up on another one right here. Three fish in his live. Well, two small ones. You know when he goes hovering willow, he is set up on one. Runner. Nope, got the mail. Dang gum it. Dang it. He is thinking about letting that bass go. I, I did not want to catch the mail. Not, not with an eight pound lead. Wow. Okay, let me set that up real quick. Yeah. That's the male that's on the bed, and he did not want to catch that bass because a lot of times either that female will lock on that bed or that female will roll. Another freaking two and a half. God, I thought the female had it, dude. I might be throwing this one back. I'm gonna see if she'll. If she'll pull up. Number four, yellow. We might have to throw her back to catch that female. The female's a big one. And uh, I just, I don't know. That's why I picked up the big fighting frog and flipped it in there. I had the big one, the first flip that I made in there, the big one rolled on it. And, uh, and then she kind of disappeared. I think I see her right now, actually. Yep. Come on, baby. Read the book. Watch how he works that fighting frog in that bed. She did not read the book. And the thing about this Across bed is surrounded by the lily pads. I can't get it. Do you see that? Oh my. He already has a six and a five in his live well. Yeah. It's not, not in a good place. Don't come up. Oh, no, 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 no. Like he's just got the trailer hooked on. Don't go anywhere, buddy. Yes! Woo! Oh, man. He's just got the trailer. Just got the trailer. Oh, that's a heart attack. Oh, my gosh. Whew. He ate it right at the boat. Oh, man. That's gotta be a six pounder. Oh, man. <laughs> I'm shaking so bad. <laughs> Seven and a half. <laughs> Oof. Dude, that's a big one. That is a big one. Yeah, boy. Let's do this.
I threw on that tree and I was just about to re ready to pick my, my spinner bait up. And he, I mean, literally right there, he just engulfed it. Golly, what a fish. That is awesome. <laughs> Santee Cooper, man. This place has got him. He came up right out there and I think I had another hook in him at the time. And when he came up, I think the, uh, the main hook came out and that trailer just, just held him. Just under 23 pounds, he's Ooh. up to third place. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, just under 23 pounds and has a two and three quarter and a pound and a quarter fish in his live well. I'm gonna tell you that strike right there was one of the best bites we have seen all tournament long. 3A sounds, War Eagle spinner bait. Five? Definitely the presence of that little wind, that little ripple helping Caleb Kufal out in a big way because that ripple was not there when he struggled so much on Friday. Only had four fish. All right. Yeah, that fish was half of what he caught on Friday. Yes. Oh, what a bite. And he had a That is why Friday. you come to these lakes, man. Mm. He had a 6-8 on Friday and an 8-7 on uh, Thursday. Barely hooked on that trailer hook. Mm. He is stuck with those outer cypress trees. He's living yes. and dying out yes. there. He's living large now. Back to our leader, Brandon Polinick. His limit for a good long while now, 23 and a quarter pounds unofficially. Got a reaction. Tommy, you called it. You said somebody was going to go 30 pounds today. We are way ahead of schedule yeah. from Friday. Got it. No, no, I got the mail. That's the mail. That's the little one. Oh my God. He's a good one, too. That's, he's twice that big, or she's twice that big. Oh, dang it, I, I felt it go and it started swimming off. I don't, All right. I don't think he's going to So you heard Polinick say, here, here's the deal. You heard Polinick say he's got the male. The female is twice as big as that. And going back to Drew Cook, he decided, now listen to this, gang. He decided to let that male go, which would have been fish number four. It has not been a fast day for Drew Cook but we did get word from his cameraman that he let his fourth keeper go, that male, in hopes that the female would stick around that spawning bed that he's on right now. So, so I, uh, I, I accidentally caught the male here. Um, and uh, whenever you catch the male, there's a 50-50 chance that you can catch the female on like the next flip. Um, it all depends on the stage of spawn they're in. Um, if they've already laid eggs, that female will get up there and protect the bed. If not, the female will just leave. Um, so I, it was a two and a half pounder. And uh, so I, I, let, I let the two and a half pounder go back to the bed and there's actually two females on this bed. One of them is a golly whopper, and the other one's a big one. I mean, so hopefully it works out and we made the right call. Woo Drew Cook hanging in there where he's fishing now. Uh, Davey High told us he's got some other places, but apparently he still believes there's more work to be done in here. Yeah, no doubt. And you want when he has two big ones on a bed, you want to stick with Drew Cook. We're going to stay with it all. More fishing on the way live when we return. Great Bassmaster Elite at Santee Cooper Lakes is sponsored by.
Ranger Boats, Yamaha, Toyota, Berkeley, and by Progressive. Although we are nearing the end of our live coverage here on FS1, I want to remind you that you can catch the weigh-in as the fishing continues until 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time today. The weigh-in starts over on Bassmaster.com at 3.30 p.m. 47 anglers out there trying to make it into the top 10 for Championship Monday. Those are the guys, if it were ended right now, unofficially, would be in the championship tomorrow. But, uh, boy, everyone under that top ten has got work to do. And there's plenty of time to get it done. That is the good news. As we uh, go down there, the Yeti cut line. <laughs> you're on the hot seat, the Yeti hot seat. You're on the hot seat if you're not in the top ten end of the day. Exactly. And that Yeti hot seat, it's going to rise in a big way today. It's going to be well past 60 pounds judging by the fish catching so far it has been a dazzling morning on santee cooper lake yeah let's take a look at a yamaha midday report show you a bit of what you missed if you weren't with us this morning some good stuff and from caleb coop koopal and really if you watch caleb koopal so many anglers in your top 10 been oh, sight man. fishing throughout this entire event he has ignored that and done massive damage today for the 3A Sounds War Eagle spinnerbait, slow for Caleb Kufal on Friday. Not the case. Caleb Kufal with right at about 23 pounds with a lot of room to grow today. And they're taking a look at your day two lead with seven and a half pound lead coming into today, starting with fireworks, about a five and a half pounder right here. But one thing to note, only three bass in Drew Cook's live well right now with almost 32 pounds on day one, still riding on the strength of that to some extent. Maybe we can stretch it out to four days, but we'll find out. Exactly right, Drew Cook been sight fishing all week long in that exact lily pad field. Big bite fighting frog, and Brandon Polinick said, I, I need Drew Cook to slip up a little bit where I can make a move on my small semi-offshore spot of suspending jerk bait. Wrote, Thanks so much for being with us what today. A big we will day see for you Brandon next Power. time on the Bassmaster Elite Series. Price. They're a line of bait. They'll work from Florida. The Guaranteed Rate Bassmaster Elite at Santee Cooper Lakes is sponsored by Hummingbird, Mercury, Nitro Boats, and by Bass Pro Shops. Hey guys, welcome back to Live Mix. Me and uh, Mr. Maddie, um, 93rd and 94th place. This there we event. go. We're going to lead you through this next segment and try to give you some advice on uh, kind of what these guys are doing and uh, out on the water. And one thing that I'm seeing right now, and you're probably seeing the same thing, is a lot of these guys, the weights are starting to get up there. And even somebody like Drew Cook, he has, I think, four for 13. Mm -hmm. Dude, he's one bite away from being where he needs to be to have a chance tomorrow. Yep. But he's two bites away from probably regaining the lead on this thing. And, you know, he's set up on one right now. I don't know how big it is. Um, but you're going to see the this afternoon, even some of these guys that got 23, 24, 25 pounds, more than likely they have a three or four pounder in there. They're one bite away from that 30. You know, yeah. that Santee Cooper, 33, 34. <laughs> Gee. Yeah, he's pretty much right on top of this one. Yeah, he's right there. Yeah, it's just crazy on how much lily pads really played in this event. 
I cruised around a lot through them in practice. Of course, I was on the lower lake, and mm -hmm. I mean, I did not see a turtle, a bass, mm -hmm. you know, a perch. But mm -hmm. um, you know, that first day of practice, 24 degrees. Uh, that was brutal. Yeah, <laughs> that was brutal, man. You should have seen me. I was so bundled up, I could barely cast. It was <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, the good thing about Moultrie was the water was so clear. I didn't even do a lot of casting. Mm -hmm. I had all my rain gear and stuff on, and I just literally cruised around and looked. And just looked. Yeah, I mean, I would, I didn't even need to fish, and I didn't see anything. But, you know, being here, I spent the whole first day of practice making a lap around, and I ended up, you know, latter part of the day in the hatchery. And I spent a lot of time in there, and I knew that – it's one of those places where it's going to go down. Yeah. Uh, but it just, that, yeah, I don't think it went down. Uh, when we were looking. Yeah. Well, you never know. I, I mean, there's, I think I, w I was talking with uh, my buddy, uh, John Kelly, and, you know, I think what he was able to find, I was really surprised, you know. Really? <laughs> and I'm, dang, dude, I looked in there in practice. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, but I just found 57, 58 degree water, and with this warming trend, uh, I mean, it could just happen overnight. Right. And so it really is a gamble when you, you got to commit to an area that is a far run mm -hmm. and just hope that those fish have pulled up in there. Because otherwise, you just killed at least, you know, a half an hour, 45 minutes of your day. Right. I know you got to be tired of looking at this. Like, thing. I learned so much watching these guys. Take it. Eat it. <laughs> look at him just shaking away. Doing that, doing that, that cook. Oh, look at, look at John Kelly. That's your buddy, right? Yeah. Oh, dude, he's got a six. And see that he's got 20, and he's got a 2.8 and a 2.12. So he's two bites from being up there, Yeah. you know, that upper 20s and things like that. I wonder what he's doing. Do you have any? Oh, man. Secret stuff. I, I do got I, – I have a feeling what he's doing. Um, you know, I, I – he did tell me that he's – He's looking for bed fish, but he's not seeing them. Gotcha. So he's he's fishing bed fish, but he's he's not sight fishing them, and um, you know just like what I told him, it's it's not a strong point on you know for me in my game. I've, it's something that we rarely get to do out west. Uh, so to to watch guys like Drew Cook, John Cox, uh, like a, what you know Corey, and you know the way that they're push pulling around and and searching methodically. But also covering a lot of water. It's I'm going to school right now. This is this is kind of cool um, being on this side of things and being able to watch it go down because it's definitely a part of my game that I want to look to improve. Uh, and it's something that I try to do on Harris. I ended up finding really good fish in practice on Harris, but that was a valuable lesson there. Don't rely on bed fish that right. you find on day one in practice. <laughs> you know, one thing I've learned, uh, you know, you take a butt kicking like we did in mm -hmm. this event, and then. You know, that night you're thinking, gosh, what what kind of crazy stuff are they doing to to beat us, you know, or beat me? And it's always way simpler than you think it is. Oh, yeah. It's always super simple. There's nothing usually outside the box. It's mm -hmm. simple. It's just about getting in an area, doing what you have confidence in. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah, it's just fishing. I mean, that's typically it's just fishing. That's all it is, man. At the end of the day, it's, we can go out and try our best. And if – it doesn't fall in the cards for us. Yeah. That's just how it is. I mean, any of these guys can stumble in a in a pocket and pull up. Like I was talking to Cox on day one, he he's like, I saw a three in this one pocket, and he went back in there and there was two sixes, hmm. and what he said was two sixes, what ended up being a six and a half and a seven. But yeah. <laughs> it's uh, it is fishing at the end of the day, and there is you know a bit of luck that goes into it. But I mean, watching Drew Cook. This is skillful bed fishing right here, guys, and this is something on, to be taking notes with. It's got to be a good fish, man. He's talking to it. Yeah, I want to yeah. see him catch it. He's like reset his, his line right there and then right back on it. Oh, he's he's fishing fluoro. Hear mm -hmm. that? Yeah. See, that's some people say that's a kiss of death in lily pads. And uh, another thing, I'm I'm fresh to fishing lily pads, so yeah. it's you know what would you do in this situation? I'm a fluoro guy. I mean, typically, I just there's something about braid that uh, 
you know, I can use 25 pound uh, fluoro and I feel like I can get a lot of these fish out I of the pads. I, I'm, I'm with you. <laughs> <laughs> I have a love hate with pads. I mean, I don't know why whoever invented lily pads put the little D in them. Right? You're, every time, every time I make a cast, <laughs> your line just goes right in there. <laughs> yeah. And I end up pulling my bait down, but. Um, you know, frogging and stuff, if I can fish on top, I love it. Mm -hmm. um, but having to cast through it and flip into it and sight fish in it, yeah, I just, like, I would have every one of those pads pulled up from my line getting <laughs> caught in the V. <laughs> so you're saying you'd go 25-pound test floral Absolutely. over, like, a 40-pound braid? Yeah. Okay. There's just something, like, in the hook, like, I just, I feel more comf uh, comfortable uh, with floral. Now, I use braid a lot, like flipping mats, frogging, oh, and for stuff sure. like that. But yeah. Um, you know, and these pads, these are actually, I think, mature dollar pads rather than the old style, you know, the big little pads. So yeah. they're, they're a lot softer. Mm -hmm. um, the RuPaul's are a lot skinnier. And yeah. Yeah, it's something just learning about different species of, of lily pads and what those bass actually prefer to spawn on. Yeah. Um, like a little tip that I learned when I was fishing down in Florida for the first time was that the bass actually prefer to spawn on the bigger style lily pads because the root balls are so much more robust. Right. These smaller dollar pads have like a really skinny root ball, almost like a lotus root, um, versus like a big tree trunk. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's something that, you know, just learning as I go and, um, you know, as I'm sitting here next to you, going to school with Drew Cook right here as he's sitting on a giant or what seems to be. I'd be bummed if this fish was like four pounds. Yeah. <laughs> I bet he would because he's only got four. Yeah. He's probably going to take whatever he can get. No, definitely. No, I'd take a four-pounder in a heartbeat. I just think that most of these guys are going to be passing up anything that's, you know, smaller than three pounds on a bed today. Yeah. Yeah, it's all relative to the lake we're fishing at. And uh, even though I did not catch a limit either day, mm -mm. Uh, a three-pounder just is not going to do you much unless you got a couple of those six, sevens. To go eights. with it, yeah. Here's oh, Mr. Guy. Mr. Cox, speaking of the devil. I'm always amazed how he has a spin rod in his hand. I love it. Part of the time. <laughs> I love it. I don't even see maybe two bait casters and the rest are spinning rods. Yeah. Come on. Just so methodical with that wacky rig. It's just so, it's so cool to watch. Well, it's just not going to be one of those magical ones. Not yet, anyways. All right. Let's see if we can watch good old boy John. Black a giant right here. Gotta go over the camera and over the fire. <laughs> <laughs> I wow. felt sorry. I, I with like ten minutes left to go the second day. I pulled in close to the ramp and uh, I'm just you know I'm I'm spent. I look down and there's a three and a seven paired up. And I just put my power poles to look at it. Yeah. And John pulls in, mm -hmm. rolls in, and, and shuts down. And I'm just like, God, I just want to throw my hands up, you know. But I <laughs> honestly never even made a pitch to it. So maybe yeah. one of those fish that he caught uh, on the second day late was one of those that uh, in that pair. Yeah, man. It's it's crazy on how much these fish move up. And uh, this place is an incredible, incredible fishery. If you guys haven't checked out Santee Cooper Lakes, you got to. It's definitely one of those hot spots. Yeah. Big, big fish. Giants. Where you at, big girl? If I can get up here and see something. I can't see through down there. She's definitely cooled off a little bit. She was. I mean, she's staying off the bed longer.
see right now. What the heck? I don't see her now. Oh, I see her now. Dang it. Yeah, she's gotten a lot less interested. can't get my freaking bait to, to get to the back of the bed.
thing swam off a bed. I know it did. waypoint this one and come back. That was a that was a good one. not one on these trees.
What's that? Right now? Now when I'm not seeing any. Look at the size of that bat! Live coverage of the Guaranteed Rate Bassmaster Elite at Santee Cooper Lakes is sponsored by Rapala. Welcome to our on location coverage. A very, very rare semifinal Sunday. An event that started as a four day event. For a little while, it was a three day event. Back to a four day event, but it's going to take us five days to get there due to yesterday's postponement but they are on the water and Santee Cooper always shows out and it has in a big way this week at the guaranteed rate Bassmaster Elite at Santee Cooper Lakes but uh oh the guy who won back in 2020 Brandon Polinick has had a giant day this morning and he has moved into the lead guy who started the event on day number one in second place is back in second place Caleb Kufal but this a look at our playing field in South Carolina for the second event in a row obviously the last one was the Bassmaster Classic but this one being held on Santee Cooper Lakes Lake Marion and Lake Moultrie and one thing is for certain people travel here for one reason and that because big giant giant fish and some people like it so much, they move here. Like two-time <laughs> two angler, the Bassmaster Classic champion, Davey Height. Man, this tournament is a tournament of changes. But one thing that doesn't change is the big bite. Yeah, absolutely. And we've seen it again today. A little cooler here today. And, and we saw Brandon Polnick get off to a good start fishing. I hate to say offshore, but way out in five feet of water, a lot deeper than a lot of these anglers are fishing, and he got off to a real good start this morning, just like he did on day one. But now, as the sun gets high in the sky, you have to look for those sight fishermen like Drew Cook to continue to do what he's done on day one and day two. Well, let's catch up the bass fishing world with our Toyota Midday Report and see what's been going on on the water on this incredible body of water. The third stop of the Bassmaster Elite Series, and this, our Toyota Midday Report, he is silent and he sneaked up and put a giant mag on day number one. Day two was a little tougher, but back on him on day three for Caleb Kufal. Yeah, Caleb had a great day on day one, just like you said. Only had eight bites, but he had some just like this. Look at this big fish that he caught earlier today. He was not able to do that day two, not yesterday, but day two. Uh, he had one seven pounder, but only brought four fish to the scale, so it really hurt him. But he's back on track today, actually way ahead of schedule from what he did on day one. So look out for Caleb. He's in an area across Lake Marion, away from a lot of the other anglers. A lot of the anglers are on the north side of, of the lake, and he's on the other side of the lake. Switching up a little bit, we saw him catch most of his fish on day one uh, on a jig. And today, you can tell the water has the dirtier water has gotten farther down the lake. The, those rains that we had during practice, it really messed up the upper end of the lake, the swamp area. But now that color's got there and he's caught him on a spinnerbait today. Your leader since day number one, the man with the plan say, catch me, catch me if you can. Drew Cook, a little slower start today, but he's catching him. Yeah, he, he's catching him. But day two for Drew Cook was not exactly easy either. He was able to maintain his lead, actually extended a little bit. But only caught about six or seven bass, brought five to the scales and had a couple good ones. That one seven pounder that he caught on day two really went a long way for him. He's got his best part of the day in front of him. Day two, we saw a lot of the anglers come in with those heavier stringers late in the day. The sun is high in the sky today, so I think we'll see that again. Sunday is always fun day for the prodigy. You don't want to let him get into Sunday, even if it is semifinal Sunday. I'll be honest with you, Dave. When I saw him jump out to that early lead on day one, even though he won the last time we were here, I thought, yeah, that won't hold up very long. But he has managed to do well sight fishing and fishing a little bit offshore using a jerk bait, but then also doing a little bit of sight fishing in the afternoon. But where he's been the last three days, there's a lot of other anglers around there, and he's just flat out outfished them. Incredible what Brandon Pollock has accomplished here this week so far. And coming back to the site of a victory back in 2020, he had two Elite Series victories that year, six time Bassmaster winner, and obviously a former Angler of the Year. Yeah, Dave, you see him here. Those first few fish you saw him on a rapala jerk bait, there you see him sight fishing up in the pads. I really like the way he's fishing both a little offshore and a little bit for those spawning fish. Let's get out on the water live with Greg Hackney right now. Also a six time Bassmaster winner, just fished his 16th Bassmaster Classic. Oh, 
have to check and see, you know, if, because I couldn't, I mean, he bites every time I, uh, I put it in there, so. I try to get him out of there quick so she wouldn't run him out of there too. Sometimes they do that when you'd be fighting one, the other one. He was just, you know, in the way. Greg Hackney currently in eighth, and Drew Cook in third. Left the dock this morning in first and third. Greg Hackney fished the first two days, about mid, here we go. Oh boy. Oh my See, God. This was a big one he was fishing for. <laughs> That's not even the it's not even the big one. Yes. Oh. Yes. Oh. If you're just Give tuning in, Drew Cook said there's two one. fish on the bed. One of them's a good one and the other one's a great big one. That's what I'm talking about, dude. He just said that's not the big one. That's a pretty big one to me. Seven pounder. And that's not the big one. And that's not the big one. Look at we got to stay tuned because. Oh, Santee Cooper. I want to see the big one. It. Oh, troubling for you, Zona. Heck yes. So that's number four again. Getting close. To that is four now. Because I had four, I threw back that male. And then, okay. I'm gonna get a drink of water. Would you like one? <laughs> oh. Oh, dude, I'm lightheaded. <laughs> lightheaded, I guess. So, so Davey, he said he let go one there. D do you know the story behind that? Yeah, there's uh, evidently there was a male, about two and a half pounds, and there's two big females, that seven pounder, and then he said the other one, I think he said, is a golly whopper. <laughs> so definitely over seven pounds, but he caught that the male, two and a half pounder, put it in his live well, and decided those fish just weren't acting the way he wanted to see them react to his bait. Greg Hackney here. Oh, wow. morning there were several boats kind of in the area with Greg Hackney I think that's why he's being a little quiet right now this is want people around him necessarily to know that he just caught I was getting fish. a little nervous <laughs> it was taking a little too long Here, me up another one now. let's watch that again there's four more <laughs> <laughs> he just caught one, put it in the live well. I don't know how big it was. Maybe some of her girlfriend. Yeah. I mean, that's a pretty nice one right there. So she was a little bit bigger than I thought. <laughs> yeah, I was like, maybe all those I called in practice four pounders were maybe a hair bigger than I thought they were. I know this one on this tree is like, dude, leave. Wow. 
four and let's call it four and three quarters. Greg said this morning he might mix it up and actually side fish some today. He hasn't been doing that the last two days. He said that on on day two on the stage too. He said I've. I figured at some point I would switch to side fish, and he said, I think it's just about time. Wow. This could be <laughs> an incredible championship Monday. I mean, a lot of fishing left here today, but just seeing how the bite is seemingly getting better as the yeah. day goes on. Definitely. And and just when you think, wow, so Drew Cook, he's just kind of, he had his two days, and then it, one, one hook set, and, and you know he's fishing for one bigger than that now. Uh, Greg Hackney, you think he's having a slow day with one swing of the bat, so to speak. Uh, everything can change here. And the thing about an expert sight angler like Drew Cook is he's not going to get distracted if he's short of a limit. You know, yeah. you'll get some people that will be like, I got to go somewhere and get a limit to relax. He knows yeah. whether it's a giant. If it's not a giant, I don't need it. And... Uh, he is well on his way to the century belt that many people talked about, and man, you can't see oh enough of that. This was moments ago. Yes. That's not even the that's not even the big one. Yes. Oh. Yes. Ah. Oh. Here, give me some quick Googly, moogly, mm. that is a giant. <laughs> Big day for both Drew Cook and cameraman Jake Latondras <laughs> getting it done out there. Oh! Oh, yeah. Can you feel the love? It, really and truly, the cameraman become a, a team with the angler that they're with, and that's great. Great to see. Team or not, I mean, nothing makes you want to huck another growing man more <laughs> than a seven pound bass. And it feels good, <laughs> I can tell you that. Oh, gosh. Ease up here and see if that. Dude, whenever both of those big ones were on there, I was like shot. And whenever she bit it the first time and I missed her, like, I mean, you saw it. My legs were shaking, I was shaking. Jake. No, that was me just shaking. Jake had to tell me to take a deep breath. Love it. Freaking love it. Yeah, that's definitely it, Jake. No doubt. One hundred percent. Do it to have one of these tournaments. One, I mean, this is one of those tournaments like that's a once in a career. I mean, the the weather, the the place, um, for what I absolutely love to do. What did he call that big one, Davey? I think he called it a golly whopper. A golly whopper. He said there's a big one, and then there's one that's just a golly whopper. I don't know exactly how much that weighs. How much is your typical we golly whopper way? Oh, <laughs> Skeeter Boats, a big fish alert. Speaking of golly whoppers, uh, Davey Height, it's Matt Airy. Six pound, eight ounces. We've seen, so that would be probably the third fish in the last 10 minutes that's been six to seven pounds. That's definitely a big fish alert. Matt Airy having a great event and fishing injured. Tore his calf muscle on Wednesday and pre-fish, I guess. Limping along, but maybe maybe it's slowing him down here. So he moved. I don't know if the golly whopper moved off of the bed that he was on, but he's not... He's, he's moved away from where he caught that seven pounder and released that two and a half pounder. 
Maybe give it a little time to settle down after he took one of them off the bed. Could it be the same fish moving to a different bed? Possibly, but uh, I don't know exactly. I can just tell looking at those pads, he's not where he was, but, but maybe he's only 10 yards away, and it could be. You're, yeah, it could be. I don't know if he moved 100 yeah. yards or 10 yards. It would be unlikely if he's moved 100 yards, but if he's fairly close, yeah, you're right. Over to three-time classic qualifier, Luke Palmer from Colgate, Colgate, Oklahoma, and having another great event. Yeah, Luke's been uh, fishing really well lately. Had a great event there at the classic and getting it done here, currently in fourth place, unofficially. <laughs> Dang it, don't come off. Son, we going places now. We going places. Disneyland. I don't know. McDonald's. I pitched in there. I was like, well, I don't feel nothing. I, I, I'm not feeling nothing. And all of a sudden, I was like, well, hey, dummy. You, you probably got a fish running around with your stuff. Can we go get a cheeseburger or something? I'm getting kind of hungry. Dude, this has been nuts. This has been freaking nuts. She's kind of heavy. I would say I'd put her over there, but I can't. <laughs> now over to our Phoenix Boats big bass leader, Pat Schlopper former Bass Nation national champion, clearly working a bed himself. Greg Hackney, Drew Cook, oh. and Luke Palmer in the upper lake, Lake Marion, and from, looks very familiar where he's at. He's in Lake it's Moultrie in the lower lake. Very mm. few anglers fish That's down there, is. surprising. Solid. He's gonna help. That's just heavy three, anyways. It's gonna get rid of number one. Yeah, he's 360. I mean, that's put us over 18. Two quick fish in the last 30 minutes for Pat Schlopper. And man, what a call he made on day two. A 115 for a nine and change. Incredible, absolutely incredible. And caught several of his fish there in about a one hour period that, that really, really helped him. We gotta find the big ones now. For some reason, we these lakes, good limit. it's I mean, not- Decent limit, not, not good for here, but decent. It's like 18 pounds, good start, but we need to find one or two of them big ones. I found one that's probably five, but it ain't, it's not, it's not ready for the food yet. So we're gonna let it marinate for a while and come back. I was mentioning that it's not real uncommon to see multiple big fish on one bed here in these Santee Cooper Lakes more so than any any other lake that I can think of. Why do you think that is? I really don't know, Dave. Um, and there's a lot of good bottom. You would think, well, maybe there's only hard bottom in, in very few places, but there's a lot of good hard sand bottom here. But but it's it's not unusual to see, like Drew Cook saying, you know, a seven pounder and one even bigger along with one two and a half pound male here at Santee Cooper. Let's make a move over to one of my personal favorites from DeBerry, Florida, John Cox, spent six hours pre-fishing for this event. But man, he is truly one of the most lethal anglers out there. And really, I think his biggest talent, a great shot here, our Humminbird Bird's Eye View, is his casual approach to this. He loves yes. every single moment. You never see him stressed. Yeah, it's just incredible. I heard Zona talking. This morning, I did not know this, that, that he had talked to John Cox about where he was staying and rolled into town, uh, you know, during practice. 
didn't get here before and uh, said, never makes a hotel reservation. Just shows up and looks for a place to, to sleep. <laughs> it's uh, really incredible if you think about a, a professional angler rolling into a different town every other weekend and just no plans, just, just hang out wherever. Vagabond. Yes, yes. The definition. But, but really, it is incredible, but at the same time, not shocking at all that right. John Cox does that. Of all people, yes. I mean, it, it, but that also shows, like, if you're the kind of person that can roll into a town that is having an event full of hotels booked out everywhere, and you're relaxed enough to do that, I mean, not, yeah. this isn't going to stress you. No. <laughs> could never do that. But, you know, there's, there's certain tournaments, and this one in particular probably just, it was good that he didn't roll into town and, and maybe fish on that first day that was so cold. And didn't didn't burn through some areas and and you know there. cross them out so to speak. With the with the way the weather set up for this event, it it certainly is playing into his hands that you know don't fish for three days when it's Boy, that's a you new know bed right there. 25 degrees on the first morning of practice. Let's have a look at John Cox's day so far here on a very rare semi-final Sunday. Once again, John Cox, our unofficial <laughs> progressive baby. Bassmaster Angler of the Year leader is in the mix. Yeah, John Cox is, like we were saying, just doing his own thing. He loves to fish shallow. He loves to sight fish for each fish. You know, you see three or four rods on his front deck. He's got a push pole and he's just going out and, and having fun. And, and he's one of the best in the business when he yeah, can visually right. fish for these fish, and he just loves doing it. And, and covering new water, fishing different areas oh, each cool. day. Day two of this event, what an incredible stringer of fish he had there. A little bit slower day the first day, but the sun up high as it is now. He's uh, a little behind schedule with size today, but the last hour or two is going to be so important for people like John Cox. We got her. I talked to him about his schedule a little while ago and said, do you not think that if you just focused on these events or just to select a few events, you do better. And he honestly doesn't believe that. He's like, I don't, in a perfect world, he said, if I could make the rules, he said, I'd like one day of pre-fish for every event. He said, because when I get more than that, he says, I'm not fishing naturally. I'm chasing something that was three days ago. And that, I mean, he proves it. I mean, he. <laughs> I, I've seen that. I've, I've seen that uh, through the years that, uh, when I was fishing two different trails, that, that sometimes it's it's best to show up maybe one day before because you, especially this time of year when you have so many weather changes and, you know, the water temperature is low to mid 50s and now it's low to mid 60s. Uh, that's a big, big deal. And you can, you can eliminate areas that on, you know, the first day of practice that, that you really shouldn't eliminate. But your, your thought is the harder I work, the more, water I can cover, the better I'm going to be. But that's not always the case, especially this time of the year when the fish are changing every single day. Great aerial shot of John Cox right now. Always calm, always cool, always collected. And he is fishing here on semi-final Sunday. He is your unofficial leader in progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year points. And man, it's a great shot of the jungles that these anglers are fishing. But atop the leaderboard, the same guy who's been up there since day number one, Drew Cook with 74 pounds, five ounces. Brandon Polnick won this event when we were here in 2020, chasing him down in second. But uh-oh, Caleb Kufal, Luke Palmer, Corey Johnson, and the list keeps growing and changing. 47 of them out there today in a few short hours. We'll cut it down to 10 and move to Championship Monday. Welcome back to Low Country, South Carolina. And a great aerial shot of our playing field, Santee Cooper Lakes. This is day number three, a very rare semifinal Sunday. We're going to finish this tournament tomorrow with Championship Monday. But all the anglers have got their eye on the Progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year leaderboard. And as we talked before the break, our new unofficial leader, John Cox, has taken the lead away from David Mullins. But uh-oh, Brandon Polnick in third place at this point in the season. And when you look at how good he is on the lakes we're going to coming up, I mean, he could be a scary cat to deal with. But an incredible list. And look at Jay Shakurik. 
currently leading Falcon Rod's Rookie of the Year and in seventh place for Progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year. But atop that leaderboard right now is that guy right there, DeBerry, Florida's John Cox. Doesn't book rooms, doesn't worry about anything but one thing, catching fish. Catching big fish, too. Great at that. John Cox fishing in that same general area with Drew Cook, Corey Johnson. Oh, I could just keep on naming names. There's a lot of people on the lower end of Lake Marion, Clarendon County. Why that area? You know, it's this. Oh, here we maybe go. this is why. Yes. Oh, oh, he's still on. He's still on. I still got her. I got her still. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Come on, baby. We need you. We need you. Come on, baby. Come on. Come back to daddy. Come back to daddy. Come on. Come on, baby. Come on. 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 Let me get you. Let me get you. We need you. We need you. <laughs> oh my gosh, got him on the jerk shed in the fire line. Oh. <sighs> oh my gosh. I saw that sucker from so far away and I'm like, oh, please eat it, please eat it. Dunk. And it took off with it. Oh, that's what we need right there. Gosh, and I was just going to leave. Okay. All right. That's the size we need. Oh, that guy didn't make it. That that fish right there, it came to daddy, just <laughs> like John Cox requested. It's it's just so fun to watch him having fun. You can tell he's just enjoying himself. I mean, there is a hundred thousand dollars on the line, but I don't think he would be having having any less fun if he were not just out there, you know, on a on a day fishing with his family just loves to, to catch those big fish. And that is the truth. I mean, he'll say it often on stage, you know, like when he's on the edge of a cut. He's like, whether I make the cut or not, I know I'm going fishing tomorrow. I mean, he, the only days he doesn't fish is when he's traveling in between bodies of water to fish. Over to Elite Series champion Caleb Kufal. Oh, yes. That'll call. Dude, look at that. <laughs> All right. Trailer hook. One of his better fish earlier was just it's on a good the good one. Hook. Good sign those fish are spawning. But with the wind and the water clarity there, he's not looking at those fish. Just it's gotta be four plus. Passing the spinner bait around the cypress trees. S smallest fish currently is three pounds, four ounces. Don't think that's true anymore. Man, it says that fish is a five pound fish. I, I don't know. My scale might be a little off. But it's a good one. It looks like a five pounder to me. We'll take it. So shocking to see him with a giant limit on day one and now again. Like what happened on day two, I wonder. Uh you know, I I say this because I fish where he's fishing a lot, a lot, a lot. And yesterday I, I mean the second day of the event, I'm I was, uh Thought, we talked about, you know, with the wind picking up, it would be good to fish a moving bait, maybe a little bit more than the jig and a you know, soft plastic like yeah, he was doing. Man. Totally different environment than where you see Drew Cook. Tournament leader since day number one, weighed in our BMC monster bag on day one, 31 pounds, 13 ounces. I'm big enough for right now. God, dude, this place has got some freaking built fish. 
I mean, they are probably a male. Thick. That's our limit. Yep. Just got his fifth keeper. We talked about him releasing that two and a half pounder earlier. To do that and not have five fish in the live well, that's, Three that's having some confidence in what you're doing. We're almost where we need to be. Almost where we need to be. Holding it high for the eye in the sky. Our water drones, great Got shot a there. Got mm, Let's find a big one. I mean, a great big one. There's one thing that is sketchy about being all up in these pads. It's like you, you can't really reel. So you gotta just kinda just boat swing them in. And then you line. And there ain't no need to get in a rush. I'll retire. It's a great, great shot there. And we talked anyway. about the number of anglers that are in that general area, but with that view, you can see like where it can stand the pressure because ones. you're not going down one little edge yeah, looking nice. at the same 10 feet of shoreline. Drew Cook with a limit of fish in the boat 15 minutes after high noon. Yeah. And that giant field, even if he doesn't right. leave that field, that pad bed field, I mean, searching for one thing. A oh, golly whopper. That's right. That's, <laughs> I was going to call it a gobstopper, but that was a thing as a kid I used to eat. It's bad for your teeth. Don't do that. Golly whoppers are good for your limit. I talked to him after day two and asked if he had different areas of Lake Marion that he had found some fish. And he said, yes, and he might go there today. It doesn't look like that, but, you know, keep in mind tomorrow, maybe he will do that. How much is an advantage is it going to be f for the top 10 fishing on a Monday? A lot less pressure on this body of water. Yeah, absolutely. It'll it'll be great for those guys. So there'll be there's always fishermen here this time of the year, but Obviously, less on a Monday than a Sunday. Just just this high sun and no clouds uh, means so much to them. Even with the pressure, those fish keep moving in, and, and you can see those fish. That water is is a dark, a little tannic look to it, um, and you've you've got to get pretty close to most of those beds to be able to see the fish. A few of the beds will be really big, like we heard John Cox that you can see from a distance, but most of those beds you have to ease through these pads real slowly and you get pretty close on those fish before you actually see them. Riddle me this, Davey Height. Does the size of the bed Make equate sure to the size of the home. fish? No, or, no, not at all. Never saw anybody else. Not in my opinion, through the years. I will say that we've talked about multiple fish being on, on one bed, you know, three, four, five fish. They tend to be on those larger beds. Uh, but I've seen monsters, golly whoppers on beds the size of a, you know, a paper plate. Here we go. It's like he just spotted one. Bird dogging.
was hoping he would get him get this fish to bite first cast. There's one bad thing about in here is you can't freaking tell you know how big they are. Have a look at our BMC on point. He has been on point since day number one of this tournament. But this is a look at our BMC on point with Drew Cook, our tournament leader, here on champion or semifinal Saturday. Yeah, Dave. Drew Cook has been on point. BMC on point. Day one of the event with almost 32 pounds. Fish he brought to the scales and. Day two, a little slower for him. That one seven pounder really kept so him up there where he needed to be, but some We're some other big back. stringers. That's something you don't see in tournaments a lot. Let it go. It paid off. It definitely paid oh off. Oh my God. He caught the male, and a lot of times that female will move up and, and be on that bed, and she's easier to catch. But that That's time, the, put the male the big one. back because that yes. female didn't act like she wanted to stay around without her boyfriend, but certainly. The yes. right move for Drew Cook. Oh. Here, give me some freaking one. Mm. The fish are feeling the love, and so is Drew Cook and camera again, cameraman Jake Latondres. And to be clear, it is not uh, either semifinal Saturday or championship <laughs> Sunday. It is semifinal Sunday. And we've got another whole day of fishing coming up tomorrow. That's right. Davey Heidel, right, you know, you need to get out of work, out of school, whatever. Nothing's more important than Championship Monday, especially, oh boy, on this incredible body of water where Drew Cook's going to be chasing down his first Elite Series title, not just that, but a Bassmaster Century belt. You know, he's talked a lot about that this week. He, he really uh, wants that Century belt. It's been on his mind all week. Don't know if this fish will help him. Two and three quarter. Number two. Oh, it will help him. It will help him a little bit. Little call for Drew Cook. Back in the lead. But not quite where he wants to be. Had just over 17 pounds in the box so far. But man, a lot of time left. And look at that absolute jungle of lily pads he is in the middle of. There you see him atop the leaderboard, 77 pounds, five ounces. And once again, Drew Cook is widening the gap from its closest pursuers for guaranteed rate Bassmaster Elite. The Guaranteed Rate Bassmaster Elite at Santee Cooper Lakes is sponsored by Hummingbird, Mercury, Nitro Boats, and by Bass Pro Shops. I've caught every bass but one that I've weighed in on a Big Bite Baits four inch fighting frog and tilapia magic. Um, that is my go-to bed fishing bait. I have made an ungodly amount of money with that bait and uh, it is it's the perfect bait and the perfect color for, for bed fishing in my personal opinion. Whenever that bait's sitting down there shaking, you and you can look at it with your eyes looking in the bed and you'll just see a, a a ray of light come by. Whenever it hits that that sparkle just right, it's just shooting, you know, rays of light out. And that's one thing that I feel like really, you know, I'm not gonna say you can't catch them on something else. You obviously can, but I feel like I can catch them quicker with that bait and be more efficient in a sight fishing tournament because of that bait. Uh, this week it's been 100% my, my sunglasses. And these are Leupold Packouts um, in the amber lens. And that's been, I mean, I've relied on my eyes all week long. Um, 
being able to see them far away has, has been the key that I feel like. I've fished around a lot of boats all week. Being able to see them further away and being able to fish for them further away than most other people, I feel like really gave me a competitive advantage. A competitive advantage, I would agree. Drew Cook has led since day number one. And other than just a few short hours where people have challenged him, he has not relinquished his lead one bit. He has not. And this, this whole tournament is really set up well for Drew Cook. He loves to sight fish. The terrain, the, the pads, the, the little contour is so similar here to, to where he grew up fishing in northern Florida, south Georgia. Nails got it. Uh, it's just really set up Good for job. him well this week. It's not been as easy after day one as, as some might think. Day, day two, he... That one seven pounder really, really saved him, as as it did a lot of people. That one big fish makes all the difference in the world, but it wasn't real easy Dang. for him on day two. Got to give him credit again. Being so patient right is what so I've been impressed it. with. Ah, so close. Two leaders on the screen. Drew Cook leading this tournament and John Cox currently leading Progressive Bassmaster Angler of the Year standings. We talked so much about Drew Cook, how much he likes to sight fish, but you mentioned this on day one and day two it's really incredible he's not just a sight fisherman for him to finish top 20 aoy every year is impressive john cox hooked up another good one there we go oh that should do some calling there boy he looks so much bigger in that bed all right so now we got to figure out if we are gonna call that one, if he looks, I know he looks bad, but I think he's, let me see. Oh, I don't know. Yeah, we might be stuck with that guy. Spit it out. Spit it out. So what Drew's doing here, there's a male and a female on the bed, I'm assuming. Now the female. That is not the male. No, that's why he said spit it out. And when he did, oh, man, look bigger at that fish. Thing right there. Bit. He ain't got half a jaw. Get him to tell us a story, but I think that's what was happening there. Three and three quarter. Getting mighty close where we need to be. There's another female up there that was bigger. Which one did I see? Six time Bassmaster winner, Brandon Polnick. Now for something completely different. If you thought this was just a sight fishing derby, Brandon told me on day one before takeoff, he says, I'm doing something different. I just hope they don't leave me and I can stay God, on top of them. Do you think that the, oh, oh, the hooked one. up? Looks big. Oh, stay down. Oh, come here. Ugh. 
got her. That should help. Oh, yeah. Look at the bug eyes on that thing. Look at the bug eyes on that thing. Look at the bug eyes. That'll call out a four pounder. Why are your eyes so big? You're not that big. You're not big enough to have eyeballs that big. Pound up, dude. Oh, yeah. Give me some. Yeah. It's a good thing when you're calling them out. <laughs> Wow. I was going to say, when that's only a pound upgrade, he's got five good ones, no doubt. Oh, almost lost my tag. There you go, girl. What a call. Man, when you're letting fish like that go, like you said, Davey Height. But he's got to have a giant day to try and narrow that lead from Drew Cook. Is this Drew Cook's tournament or can someone catch him, Davey Height? It's his to lose at this point. I certainly wouldn't bet against him. Well, a lot of fishing left this afternoon. And remember, Championship Monday tomorrow. Live coverage of the Guaranteed Rate Bassmaster Elite at Santee Cooper Lakes is sponsored by Rapala. Wouldn't be out of line to say there's something of a catch fest going on out there on Santee Cooper right now. But of course, catch the, the meaning of what I'm talking about right now. Rock your fishing world. Get ready to win cash and prizes. A possibility of going fishing with Mark Zona, Davey Height. All you got to do is sign up and play Rapala. Bassmaster Fantasy Fishing. Pick your team and, and just keep on for the rest of the schedule. And there's plenty of yeah. left on the schedule. You can have some fun. And Big time fun. We're having fun today at the Guaranteed Great Bassmaster Elite at Santee Cooper Lakes. And Mark Zona, I, I, Dave and Davey got to preside over a 40-minute catch-a-thon there. I, that, was, that was fun to watch. Uh, it's been a beatdown, but another beatdown has been you on a one, Ron Boy. You let him hang around a little bit, Tommy, but now it's to the point where you get on now. Get on out of here. Me and Go on now. Check. We just, I'm 29th in the Tommy world. Tommy is 29th, 99.9 percent. He's got Drew Cook first, Luke Palmer, Stephen Kennedy, and his other two guys, Brian New and KJ Quinn, are also yeah. in our top 25 it's a, it's a, or six or so. It's the dream team right there, Shoot. I'm it's a dream team. Like taking, taking, grab some wood, boy. <laughs> Back out to Drew Cook. Got himself a seven pounder in the last hour. Very too bad, nice. Too bad you're not eligible for any prizes there, Tommy. Uh, well, I, I'll treat myself to something. Heck, one of your guys, Brian New, just landed a seven pounder. Oh, he's still my heart. Seven pounder, about 11, uh, 11.39, excuse me, 12.39. Take it back, 11.39 p.m. Just added a, about a four pounder a few minutes ago. He's regained, reestablished a lot of that lead he started the day with, but uh, he cannot shake Brandon Polinick, and at this point he cannot shake Caleb Kufal either. Now Kufal's going for big bag again. He had uh, second bag on day one, 29.10. He's up to 28.4. Palmick's up to 25.9. We think it's a little bit higher than that. His total is 74.8, so he'd need what he has today to get the century belt. And Cook is only at least once. Like 21 and a half pounds from getting a century belt tomorrow. Wow. Without upgrades today. You have to say that's a, there's a good likelihood of that. The one I saw was a nice one. One that I would love to give a ride to John Z Landing.
I'm like started a 710 back of Cook. It, right now, it's about four pounds. Can't make the deficit. cast. And he spent a good bit of the morning ahead in the leaf. Put a different one on, I can cast a little better in the wind. Fourth place, Progressive Angler of the Year points. Been up there in the upper echelon every year, the four years he's been fishing with the elites here. Gosh, and then you look down the stand, he's a guy, 20th place, Chad Morgan Taylor, with a five pounder, six pounder, then he just finished up a limit with a five pounder, knocking on the door of the top 10 tomorrow, he's in 12th. <laughs> He's over 20 pounds today. There we go. Let's take it out to Josh Douglas again. Ooh. Yeah. That's what we were waiting to see. Oh, look at that. Good look at one of those big males. First tail now, his tail sticking out. Eat it. He's got it. Get in here, get Great. in here. Is that in the mouth? Is that in the mouth? That's in the mouth. Told you he's not big. God, I hope she, this was worth it. I hope she locked on. In the mouth. Finally. He'll only do it when she's around. You notice that? I think that's a 14-incher. Oh, yeah, I'll be. Let me just get a quick wait. Hopefully she sets up. In a good look at when that white disappears here. No tournaments, but she will. Two and a quarter. Just got to sneak right here. <laughs> Great camera work. Going there with your friend. Absolutely. Josh needing that one. It's his second keeper of the day. Huh? Yeah, we, uh, I just decided a lot of the stuff that I've been fishing the last couple days is just too windy. And honestly, from what I, I am seeing, I saw some fish, but it just looks like it's dying. Like it's, it's just not that good. And I can't see it, I'm fighting the elements. And one thing when you're this time of year, you just can't fight the elements. You gotta kind of give it what the conditions are gonna give you. So I'm just running new water now in areas that I've saw fish and um, you know, getting some slick water where I can actually see. And I saw this male, and I've been seeing another male that's about three pounds. This, the male we finally caught, but I keep seeing a big fee. Oh, she's there, she's there, she's there. I finally caught the male. It took a, a little while. And now the female is locked on. There's another male trying to get on the nest. Where's she going? Where are you going? Look at the size of that fish. No, now she's chasing this other male. Oh, she might be going back to the bed. That bed sort of sticks out a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like the it's skirt on like a Christmas tree. almost like running off of that male. That's kind of quick. Men, don't, don't leave your ladies behind. A Christmas gold skirt on a green rug. All right. 
coming, and I heard him say it's coming. Back. That other male came over to the bed. The other male's bigger. I don't know where he's going or coming from. He just swims around. Come on, where are you? I hear it. Nope. Yep. You think? That's full-blown grieve, grieve counseling. Uh, I'll be darned. I wouldn't have thought that. The male ain't hardly going to help me at all. I mean, but I need that female to lock back onto that nest and it's just like I have yet to get both of them to lock on right away the first day my two best fish I caught uh, were the females and they they you know the male I'd mess around with him a little bit shake him off shake him off and then she'd come over kind of mad and, and end up eating the bait and then even when I put up that 28 pounds I couldn't catch the females they were mostly the males I ended up catching them later which I'd like to do you know, just kind of fishing in areas, but this is what they do to me. It's just a predicament now. It's a two and a quarter, but it's like, what will that fish do? Oh, there she is. There she is. You see her? to the bed. It's such a predicament. There's a part of me wants to put him back hoping that She'll set there. There she is back there again. Let me just see if I can draw her attention in. Now that she's swimming around. Oh yeah. Good stuff right there. Great, great camera work that we have seen today. And really, today's the first day that we have seen some fish really locked on, especially as the day has progressed. A lot of these fish starting to set up Keep your eye on that white craw with Josh Douglas. Beautiful, beautiful display right there. And that is the great thing about this time of year. If you are into bed fishing, this tournament is, well, it's pretty much for you. When the white turns black. Yeah. Well, Tom Wayne bringing the goods. Always does and always has. Power pole replay of the day. Good stuff right there, Tom Wayne and Josh Douglas. And while we're at it, why don't we just show a fantastic catch? I believe this catch was while we were at break, Tommy Sanders. Mm -hmm. Part of the catch bit. Greg Hackney said he was going to leave where he caught him days one and two. He has been flawless all day long. Greg Hackney, Josh Douglas, double. Right back at you. Grab some wood, boy. You're the power pole. Re Play of the day. Replay of the day. Let's take it out to Clifford Perch, another fellow notorious for doing a whole lot of looking at them and catching them when they're on the bed. I think they're from Arizona. A little bit slow today. Not quite at 10 pounds went. yet with three fish for clipping something big. He had one of those 26 eight pound, 13 off. ounce day two. Two big is. fish, an eight four and a seven five. Oh, 
kind of work. Inside the mouth, a little better. They're not giants, but... Three pounder. One. Is that four? One, two, three, four. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah. Good one right there for Six. Clifford Perch. Needed. Three pounder. Yeah, needs some big ones to show up. He's got to fight his way back into the top ten. That's the whole point of today. Well, we got one. Need big. Palmer's had a hot streak at certain times of the day today. Well, I, yeah, Luke, <laughs> I ain't done much more than that today. Luke Palmer's really close to where Caleb Kufal has caught up from this morning. Yeah. But I was from... God, dang. this is a giant. Oh my God, oh my gosh. This is her. This is her. Gosh dang, there's so much. This is her. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Yes! Woo! <laughs> when I picked up on it, I was like, I think she blew it. She didn't blow it. She got it. Yes! Yes! Oh my gosh! Son! Hey, well, you wanna go home now? Can we go home? Dude! Dude, I pitched in there and she hit it and I thought I was on it like it like it come over a nut or one of those stumps and I was like, huh, when the line's out here by the boat, I might want to stick her. Look at this freaking coal, son. I don't even know what I I've got to I legit don't know. I got a four, but I don't know what other one I can call. This is my small one. <sighs> Tommy, that's about a six pound upgrade. He's up to 29 pounds oh plus <laughs> almost 30, nine pounder in a tight third place now. <laughs> Having supplanted Caleb Kufal, who was a guy who's been on fire. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? That's what's wrong with suck it. She ain't that big. She might be nine. You know where? I called that, didn't I? From here. I called that, didn't I? Nine and a quarter. 
Oh. <laughs> yes! <laughs> Strip club now. What? <laughs> Dude, that is freaking unreal right there. Oh my lord. Dude, I got a nine and a quarter, a seven and a half, a six, a five and a half, and a five. You got well over 30. You said you had 27 before? Yeah, you got to up. Add, add that up. Add, the, add that up. Hey, add that up. Just nine. Eighteen. Nine and a quarter. She was nine and a quarter. Put her in as a nine. Nine and a quarter. <laughs> I'd say he's got thirty suits, wouldn't you? I, yeah. I can't remember. Hey, hey, Kyle, you go ahead and go do your pictures. You're good now. Because if I call out now. Talking to photographer Kyle Jesse out in the water there. And uh, his 7.8 he had entered is a 6.0. So, yes, he is over 30 pounds for sure. Within striking range of Drew, Drew Cook, probably less than five pounds back. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. You want to calm down a little bit. <laughs> he has joined the freight in a big Oh, my way. gosh. I got a little excited back there on that one. That, that there's uh, potentially one of the biggest fish I might ever weigh in in a tournament. <laughs> and caught it at a very, very, very good time. <laughs> oh, man. This has just been a major blessing morning. Like, it's been nuts. Like, <laughs> getting to do what I like to do. Which obviously isn't flip cypress trees, but I've turned, learned to, I've got kind of fond of them today. But every time I've pitched this morning, it's been a, it's been a good one. So I'm, <laughs> the yum has uh, definitely paid dividends, and I'm even throwing light, pretty decently light line in a sense for what I'm doing with the quality of fish that's around, throwing 18 pound sun line, and, uh, Got my Kara Amistad Falcon tied on. That's been one of my always staples over the years. And, oh, man. Well, it's definitely a cypress tree feel to what's happening here right now at this point in this tournament semifinal. Sunday at the Guaranteed Rate Bassmaster Elite at Santee Cooper. The cypress tree guys, Luke Palmer with over 30 pounds. Caleb Kufal with 28.4. Hmm, the rise of the cypress guys. Luke could have about 33. I'm adding it up. 33. Amazing. What's next? We'll take a break and we will come right back. Whoa! Whoa! Look at the size of that bass! Live coverage of the Guaranteed Rate Bassmaster Elite at Santee Cooper Lakes is sponsored by Rapala. The live coverage moves on here. There are two big battles going on right now. This guaranteed rate Bassmaster Elite on semi-final Sunday. Of course, the battle to make it into the top 10, so very important in the large context of the tournament because that's the only way you'll have a shot at a championship tomorrow. But we have seen a fantastic battle at the top of our leaderboard. Drew Cook retaking his lead that he lost earlier today, and we just saw Luke Palmer catch a nine pound four ouncer. And I'm, I'm sure we'll show you that one again. Just incredible to take a strong third place finish, Mark Dillon. Absolutely. And really, Tommy, looking at what Drew Cook has done today, you heard him make the comment, I'm about where I need to be here on semifinal Sunday. Up to Drew Cook live. Have to think he's going to start looking for what he needs for championship Monday here shortly. I think Davey Hyde told us he did, in fact, have such a place. He just hasn't felt compelled to go there. Yet. Never bite.
I am way too close. Nail bit it again. Female swam back over there. Xeon Bass Track Cook has a 212 in there and a 30. 22 pounds today. Yeah, 78 and a half, uh, 78 and a half total. He needs 21.7 to 100 pounds. I know he wants it. He wants to win first. I'd say he's, he's going to get there, man, because I don't think he has two that are that small right now. Right. That's why I said on Bass Track. Right. You know, one of the really, really cool dynamics of this tournament. To catch the male and... Yeah. Dude, I mean, he's biting at every freaking cast. There she is. I accidentally almost hit her. And what I was going to talk about, Tommy, is whenever you're in a predominant, you know, predominantly what this has turned into a sight fishing tournament, the Mercury Dare to Compare is going to be two anglers mm -hmm. that have really not done any of that. Look at Caleb Kufal and Luke Palmer and what they have done on the south end of Lake Marion. An unbelievable day for both anglers. And here's really what's cool about this is fishing very close to each other and really the same kind of deal fishing you know those outer trees leading in the spawning pockets three to four feet of water cypress trees and they have mauled them today you have to think to yourself as tough as it was on friday for caleb kufal that little presence of wind but it's how they've caught them caleb kufal predominantly has lived with a three a sound spinnerbait to where luke palmer has more he has saturated those trees fishing them very very slowly today the mercury dare to compare is two anglers really fishing the same cover in a totally different way your mercury dare to compare You know, Tommy, there was one thing watching Drew Cook when we were on FS1 today. Every single time that we've been in a sight fishing tournament, Drew Cook pretty much uses one rod, one lure, oh, mm -hmm. period, right? Why does he have any other rods on the That's, deck of his bar right now? <laughs> as, as he said, he's won an unbelievable amounts of money with that rig right there. Why would you change? We were watching Josh, Josh Douglas. As we go to Josh Douglas right now, how about that? Well, we did for a second. There he is. There we go. With his white, big white. Yes. Bug in there. And you, we were right on top of the fish. And you could see it. You could see it. But think about Drew Cook 30 feet farther away in that little bitty tilapia bug. And he's seeing that thing. Oh, that, my God. That shows you what kind of eyes it takes to do the Drew Cook level work. Absolutely. And I'll tell you, if you really watch Drew Cook, obviously. Uh-oh. Oh, boy. I don't know how big it is. I can just see its lateral line. That's all I can freaking see. I think I'm gonna go back to the Cinco just because it's clearly wanted that Cinco. I don't know how big that one is. I don't know if 
it's that female. I don't know what it is. I can just barely see its lateral line over there. While you're tying there, tell me what you're doing, what you're, what you're looking for. Yeah, we're just, we're just around a bunch of fish now. And we found an area that was more like the area I was fishing the last few days. And the key is that I can see. I can just I, I can see in here. Um, I'm just going at it, you know, blind, just kind of looking around again and trying to figure out where they are. But I can see. I saw one. No, he's still there. I'm just gonna throw way past him. I don't know how big it is. I all I can I can't tell if that's the whole fish or just his lateral line. Oh, 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 oh. Go and grab it. Oh, God, I can't tell. Oh, and this gets a really, really good look at, if you're just tuning in to Bassmaster Live, you saw that white craw turn black. You could tell a lot of these areas today where Josh Douglas at least caught them on Friday, getting a little bit affected by that small chop on the water and Josh Douglas kind of bailing on his primary area. Better visibility and you can obviously see really good where he's tucked into right now. He just found a flat slick place on the lake. Yeah, for sure. I just, that's just no old school hidey holes with that. I guess. Yeah, I guess. Right? Teed up on the white. I don't even know if it's on a bed or if it's just sitting there like that one was over there. Oh, here it comes back. Oh, it's a male and a female. I just can't. The male's the small. Right the female's not small. I just have no idea if she came back or not. I can't see nothing. There's a ripple on the water. I mean, we give her plenty of time to come back, but. I can't see good enough to know if she, you know, swims out or get that time. She's even there. Or... I mean, sometimes it look. I mean, I'll be real honest with you. Sometimes, all of a sudden, it looked like I kind of saw a fish. I, I don't know. Whatever. It all happens quick. Let's get five in the box. They're in here. I can see they're kind of crawling around everywhere. I can't tell if this is a, a keeper bass. I know that the female was definitely a good one. Take it. Another thing that we talked about early this morning, a lot of those giant, giant stringers, that's what's so unique about Santee Cooper Lakes. Guys like Pat Schlopper, who's fishing down in Moultrie, oh, okay. and we've seen it other times this week, like is Let's just try a different bait. such confined areas where these giants will come into spawn, and they'll all, a lot of them will use the exact same bed, of a party bed, and it, it looking at what Pat Schlopper did, that was a 20 yard stretch at most, he said, where he caught over 25 pounds. And, and what's weird to Tommy, and you know this, you see bluegill do that. You know what I mean? Like when you see shell cracker beds and there's just oh, bed, yeah. you know, a honeycomb, you, you see that with bass here. It's just one, there's a sweet spot in on the property and they're they're gonna wanna be there or nowhere else, I guess.
<laughs> Boy, there is some eye spying going on now. <laughs> Corey Johnston's been doing it all day, that's for sure. You know, and you heard, you know, you hear that term so often, like, you know, that there's a wave coming in, blah, 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 a big push of, but that happened Friday afternoon. If you looked at that second flight, I know Dave and Davey were talking about it a lot. If you looked at the, yeah, I'm sorry, the latest flights that, that were coming in 430 to 530. Yeah, fourth flight. Yeah. On Friday, they were you know, that end of the way in those guys crushed them. And Tommy, if you remember back to 2006, there was a few fish up early in practice. And then when that population on this lake came shallow, it, the, the entire system was loaded with them. You know, every single pocket had a dozen five to eight pounders. It felt like, I guess what I'm saying is it's amazing how quickly it can go from tragic to magic on this lake. Yeah, that's the accounts people were giving us, you know, coming back to the way in there were just unbelievable back in those days. But you, you really cannot say enough about Caleb Kufal and Luke Palmer to still be hanging in this thing, not looking at them. That's that's impressive, man. That's and and you could throw Polinick in there for you know seventy percent of what he's weighed in. He's been looking at him, but it's been on his step finder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you can commit to something that in the face of what everyone else is doing and and get the results those guys got. The so, Tommy, I'm going to ask you a question. All of our fish, when you're sight fishing, have to be hooked in the mouth. Yeah. Right? That's been for sure. decades and decades. The rule. Sometimes, you, you know, so other circuits, you see that's a loose rule. But in, in, in Bassmaster, I'm going to ask you a question. Okay. Will we see that all fish that you're looking at on your live technology have to be hooked in the mouth from here for wow. if you think somebody asked oh, me God, that question that's a great point that is a great point um I, I i have to say i i would support that yeah it's it's wow you think, you, yeah. you're sight fishing you're sight fishing in a different way that's right that's something to ponder we're gonna hit you right now with something else to ponder not yes you know, guys waiting on the big fight Daily trivia is what we got for you right now. Here, where does Preston Clark's 115 pounds, 15 ounces rank on the all-time heaviest weight uh, list as of today? Is it 8, 10, 12, or 15? Think about okay. how long ago that was. Think about all the places the elites have been since then. And see if you can come to a conclusion. We'll come back and pay the answer up for you in just a minute. Meanwhile, there's going to be plenty more fish catching. It's just been phenomenal this afternoon in the Santee Cooper Road. Whoa! Look at the size of that bass! Live coverage of the Guaranteed Rate Bassmaster Elite at Santee Cooper Lakes is sponsored by Rapala. Semi-final Sunday here. Third stop of the year for the Bassmaster Elite Series. We're getting into what you might call the desperate hours here. Last couple hours of yes. Season. Got to get into the top ten. Ooh. Striker Daily Trivia. Let's harken back to 2006. All the records were shattered by Preston Clark's 115 pound, 15 ounce, five, four day total. There. Where does that rank nowadays? As we sit now, is it eighth, tenth, twelfth, or fifteenth, Mark Jones? T. Sancho total dart throw B. Ten. I'm going to go with you on that. I, I think about what? I think of Amistad, all these places, you know. And I'm going to say, Falcon, oh, wow. wow. They've been catching them better than we thought. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Man, oh, man. Sure seemed like a lot back in the day, though, and it, it is a lot. Yeah, absolutely. Set the record. Kennedy uh, broke it the next year, and then 2008, Falcon, everybody in the top 12, top 100. Yeah, I forgot the Clear Lake. Yeah, that's Get in the water right now. Corey Johnston has been working this one for quite a while. Like Hackney, 
most of his weight this week, a Strike King Rage Bug. Very natural colors, like Hackney. That's the, that's the male. It's the male. Hopefully these other two females stay. It's a small one are of the three. Big, big males in this lake. Bob just Shoot. jumped inside our top 10 right behind Corey Johnson with 22 pounds today. Across the lake right now. Josh Douglas been working this one still. Been a slow day for Josh Douglas. This thing must not be big at all. I find this interesting, Tommy. Friday, a lot of Josh Douglas big ones that he weighed in. He had a massive stringer. Mm -hmm. A lot of them came frog fishing gotcha. late. Oh, it's tiny. I can't believe it. It's not even a keeper. Jeez. Well, that was a good chance to see if it was girlfriend. That thing that I'm going to keep. It's going to be 14 inches here. Might keep. Oh, he's gonna keep. We'll call this one a pound. I don't see that other one. I gotta keep moving. Josh needs keepers now. And yeah. Keeps. Right here. Going out there, buddy. Barely a keeper right there no for Douglas, as you said, days. Tommy. Though. Those are not ones you want to take mm -hmm. to the weigh-in with Dave Mercer later there today. I from there, we're gonna. Around there. I wonder if it's. I wonder if they're just nests and these females are just moving around. Good. That's ugly. He's dropping 25 points today already. He needs those li those limit fish to gain as many points as he can. Lake Marion, we're going to get back down to Moultrie right now. Pat Schlopper has not located those giant females that he had on Friday. Got her. Baby. Yeah, baby. Or, or maybe he has. Oh, <laughs> look at that. Yet. He I told you yet. that was the spot, baby. <laughs> oh, that's Bill. That's Bill himself. Yes. Oh, dude. I feel like I can sight fish. Do I know what I'm doing? Or I probably got lucky. Oh, dude, that's a, that's got to be six. Oh my God, I'm shaking. It's gotta be six, dude. <laughs> it's almost seven. <laughs> I told you it was a big one. Six and three quarter, baby. Oh, let's get this other one. Then we might be able to fish tomorrow. I want to fish so bad tomorrow. Oh, dude. Oh my God, dude. I don't, what am I do? what did I, what did I do? What happened? No, what well, gosh, it's summer three. <laughs> oh, oh, the yellow belly. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, that's the bite. Yes, get in there. Get in there, thank you. Get in there, I said, Billy, Billy, get in there. <sighs> yes. That is a heck of a call right oh, there for shoot. Pat Schlopper. <laughs> Look at that one cruising the edge there. That's a a, a Tommy, it is. Seven, too. Fair to say, we are seeing way more big ones today than we did on oh. Friday. Oh, by, by factor Easy. two, I'm thinking. 
Yeah, two times as many. Giants are coming in, Pat, Pat Schlapper moves all the way up into fifth place. He wants to fish tomorrow, he said that. He did a lot to make a case for that. And he's almost 22 I got to back pounds. on this one. <sighs> that was the one we needed to have a chance. Now we got to get back and maybe catch this other giant one and then get back and then cross our fingers. That was, that was, that was an epic catch. Not as epic as the 9-10 yesterday, but. Talked about it earlier today, Pat Schlopper. See, that one. Only had one other competitor. Bad or just cruising for biscuits on the edge. One other competitor in there that did not make the cut. He is on his way home but did say there was a lot of local pressure. That's a pretty yeah. popular pocket of Moultrie that he's in. We gotta go back through that hot zone. And then we gotta go. John Cox, save for one five pounder, has not had the big one show up for him today. Exactly, but boy, that, that bed sticks out a little bit. <laughs> There's a glowing donut right there. Hopefully he'll call. He might. Oh. oh, that's a pretty nice one. Gosh, I hope he does. Gotta be better than two and a half. Oh, I think we're starting to get to that point where there, we have to find a female. That's the way it's looking anyways. See if we can figure out. I mean, because that's a probably a three and a half. Let's see, we got blue, green. Corey Johnston is on. He has come back to that fish now three different times in the last hour and a half. On one here, it's like male keeps grabbing it and uh, she's probably six. So. Every time the male grabs it, she moves, gets all excited and moves right up on the bed, but she hasn't ate it yet. Try something big here and see. She 
She is a nice one. Corey right at 21 pounds, sixth place. Come on, honey. You can definitely tell that that little breeze on the south end of this lake, it's been blowing north, northwest, really the last, call it 24 hours since that storm pushed through, has greatly helped Caleb Kufal and Luke Palmer because when it was slick on Friday morning with Caleb Kufal, those fish that he caught today, because there are a lot of, he was in the same area, those fish would not commit as obviously as good as they did today. Kufal just under 30 pounds, as he was on day one. All right, guys, so we uh, we got one dead one in there. He's probably about three and a quarter, so we can't call him. It's our smallest. Um, we got one nice one, like a four and a half or so, and we got some really nice three and a halves. Um, you know, now, I mean, now we're pretty much in search of a big one. We're gonna, we're gonna just keep looking the rest of the day and, uh, I mean, that's really what we're gonna need. We're gonna need a female to call. I don't really know if we can find too many more ma bigger males. I mean, maybe find a four or something, but um, you know, if we wanna make up any big ground, we need, we need big fish now. So, um, you know, I, I don't, right now, I don't really feel like we have enough. I mean, nothing's really safe out here. This place has got giants in it. So, I mean, you know, down to the last second, someone should catch a really big one and uh, bump us out of the top 10. So. Um, you know, I feel like we need to get one more, like maybe a six or a seven, I'd feel really good. Um, but I do like what I'm seeing, you know, water's starting to, uh, starting to slowly drop, which is good because, uh, you know, the last couple days it's been, it's been, uh, really, uh, really high. So now it's starting to f fall and the clear water's coming out and, uh, I'm able to see them now where I want to see them, you know, more out in the open and. Uh, that's the way I, I like to bed fish. I like to be able to drive right over them and, and uh, spin around on them and stuff. Don't worry about getting them all muddy and stuff. John Cox sizing up the situation right there, talking a little bit earlier about the urgency uh, with which he's fishing right now and make it into that top 10 right now. How spoiled are we getting? We haven't seen a seven pounder in two, two minutes and 10 seconds, so we're just gonna take a break and let everything reload right here. Drew Cook still on top, Brandon Falnick, Luke Palmer. No doubt about it. And anybody telling you you got to be stealthy and quiet up shallow, John Cox will prove you wrong as he's plowing through that bean field. <laughs> yes, he really is. Caleb Kufal, fantastic day as well. And we just saw a giant for Pat Schlopper. Be right back. Woo! Woo! Look at the size of that bass! Live coverage of the Guaranteed Rate Bassmaster Elite at Santee Cooper Lakes is sponsored by Rapala. Into the last couple of hours. Semi-final Sunday. We got a championship Monday coming up here at the Guaranteed Break Bassmaster Elite at the Santee Cooper Lakes. We got 
Drew Cook on top of the leaderboard. Drew Cook, who's just only about 21 pounds and change away from a century belt. He's got the rest of the day to do it, plus all day tomorrow. I'd say Brandon Paul is pretty much on schedule as well to pick up that piece of hardware. So we'll see how it works out. Would love to know what Drew Cook has I spied that he kind of is saving for us on Championship Monday. Try to get that information before we hunker into Bassmaster Live tomorrow. Obviously, uh, probably the best fish catching day that we have seen in quite a while as far as across the board. Back to Drew Cook Live. He has been on this one for a while, too. He's gonna go. See what a gorgeous oh, yes. day it is out there. Holy cow. Oh, it is. It has been a delightful day out on Santee Cooper Lakes. TH Marine weather watch for Monday. <laughs> it's going to be fantastic. Going to get a little bit cool tonight. Yeah. Got to see that uh, last evening. It's going to be a high of 71. And I'm sure Drew Cook and everybody I spy and not a problem with it being sunny all day long on Championship Monday. It's your TH Marine weather report. A little cooler today. Everybody keeping their uh, yeah. fleece on. Even now, little, some of them still got it on. Gentle northwest breeze. Yeah, insistent breeze. Some great basketball later tonight. Mar March Madness in full. Whoa, a little worried about the Spartans and Duke, though, Tommy. Oh, well. So we take know. a look at that sick aerial. They're up against a bit of a juggernaut. There. Yeah, no doubt about it. With a whole sentimental angle to it and everything else. A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Josh Douglas making it. Yeah, he's back in he it. He is in the back country now. Tommy, a question for when, you know, we interviewed Jason Christie on FS1 today. Yeah. As much as he enjoyed talking about winning the Classic, he really seemed genuinely ticked off at his performance here. This, I Like, he was mad. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, yes. like, you know, sort of a little bit of blind rage <laughs> at what had happened. Yeah, and, you know, and we didn't want to talk about it on day one. We didn't want to even bring this up. He was right around the corner from Greg Hackney that entire day one and day two. I mean, he's 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 got supernatural powers. How does he wind up with one fish? <laughs> Being right around the corner from you know, Hackney, eight hours of fishing. I don't understand. I guess the other thing that stunned me was when he said that this was his first time to this lake because it, it, it's the kind of lake that, if Jason Christie could paint a picture of stuff he excels yeah. at, you're staring at it right here. You liked that, didn't you, Such? Yes, I did, right here, right there. Well, you, I remember the photo of you and Davey Hyde fishing down there. You guys brought in some nice fish. Hey, I've been lucky enough to tape here, Such. Like it. And I they've been... It. We said this on day one, those shows look a heck of a lot better condensed into 30 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> but is the thing right? is, if you fish daylight, yeah, absolutely, man. We, you, two guys in a boat, you know, you're going to take 10 to a dozen shots. 
but this is what it'll look like by the end of the day you're like wow we blasted them but it, it you know it's never ever every time i've been there and i you know i've learned areas of this lake from guys that are the best that have ever fished this lake it is never a fast proposition it it uh it's work but it 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 pays you back you don't have day one actually like Polinick where you catch three in a row in 15 minutes and then well he struggled no. after that and then yeah. you go around the no. corner and catch two Such. more so you hour. absolutely do have days like that. You absolutely, you have days where you catch, you know, we've taped shows where you catch three giants off of a, a cluster right of cypress right trees and then you don't get a bite for <laughs> four and a half hours. Mm. That's about what Palnick experienced. Yeah. Did get a report from uh, drone pilot Wes Miller. Uh, it might be a gentle breeze in the pockets but it is gassing right now out on the main lake ah. of Lake Marion. I was gonna say it was supposed to build a close to 15 in late afternoon. I have not seen it. Tomorrow, way less winds though. It'll only get up maybe seven miles an hour by afternoon. Little slower pace today for Clifford Perch. Yeah, he uh, hasn't found him where he expected him to be. Yeah. If he had, he's pretty good at putting him in the boat. Yeah, yeah. You know, we talk about how good Drew Cook, or Drew Benton is at sight fishing. Clifford Perch is right up there and always has been on the Elite Series. And, and Tommy, you'll find it interesting. He got back to some of his elusive ways, not wanting to really dive into his oh, baits, really? which okay, you know how he'll get. Well, gosh. A pleasure to cover, but he'll, he's elusive when it comes to his yeah. lure I mean, selection. He's unfailing, unfailingly polite guy. I mean, very, very nice. Absolutely. Nice Abs yeah, no, great no, no. to cover. Yeah. Which makes me ask what lures you're using even more. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, one more question. What do you use? Yeah. <laughs> Is he more secretive than Steve Kennedy? Uh, in the realm? Yeah, he's in the realm. Sure. That's interesting. Who Kennedy's right at the cut in 11th with 61 pounds which you thought it would be a little bit right near there. Take a look at the day for Corey Johnston. He's not too many pounds above that 10 place, that cut one. Exactly, but really everything Corey Johnston has in the live well, really he was off to the fastest start right around the Potato Creek area. And I believe our day two leader, Drew Cook, got to watch both of these go in the live well earlier today. Kind of have to ask yourself that little lily pad field right there that Drew Cook, Corey Johnston, and others have laid the uh, wood to the first, well, three days now of competition. And it's reloaded quite a bit. Most of his work's been done with a Strike King Rage bug, kind of bouncing back and forth. This one here, mid morning, right around five pounds. No, that was not the five pounder, my fault right there. Boy, Corey Johnston with a pile of giant males in his live well. It's been the day for the Canadian angler. And Hasn't got one of those sixes or seven. He gets one of those oh, and he's yeah. in. He's, oh, yeah. he's good to go for tomorrow. May still be, for sure. Absolutely. Hour and a half fishing time left on average. Now, our hey, guys. Yep. now, now, watch Corey Johnston right now. He's gonna, he's locked in on one, and he's gonna weigh a fish right now. 
to see if the one he's on is gonna help him. Now that's, wow. That's like a 3D chess game right there. Uh-huh. Well, they bit funny today, though. I miss quite a few fish, and they just keep, I guess they're probably most of them are on beds, just out here deeper, and they just don't wanna, a lot of them probably just picking it up and easing off with it and not really getting it. That's I've exactly lost more fish what he's doing. All week combined, which is normally normal for me is losing fish, but. Corey Palmer trying to, I mean, Corey Johnson trying to do something I've never seen before. Luke Palmer, though, he has gotten his work done for the day. No, he definitely has, Tommy, and he was one of the, uh, one of the anglers that got a little bit burned off lake on day number one. A lot of anglers wanting to concentrate on the stump hole area that we covered in a tournament about a year and a half ago, and he said that area got blown out and absolutely Crash day one for Luke Palmer coming down Lake Utah Springs area basically outer trees biggest key just like Caleb Kufal trees in three to four feet of water that Luke Palmer made the comment fish were kind of filtering through this one right here I mean a giant that's the power pole replay of the tournament so far got it biggest one we've seen all week on camera yeah and you can hear Luke Palmer say that he not only are they migrating through these outer cypress trees, you can also kind of hear the comment where he feels they are now starting to lock on around some of those wow. deeper cypress trees. Luke Palmer, we figure he's over 30. Suits says he may have as much as 33 pounds, did you know? Yeah, he started that? rattling off nine, four, seven, eight, six, oh, five, a half. It's near 33. Oh. Anglers fish on, some of them not much more than an hour to fish, depending on where they are. There we go. There is a full-fledged fan fest going on at the oh, yeah. John C. Land facility right there. Look out for that truck. That's exactly right. Oh, oh no, no. <laughs> Look at that. It's oh, cute geez. as a button. I love it. Cute as can be. We've got more to come. We'll be back with a final hour of fishing and a little bit more after these messages. The Guaranteed Great Bassmaster Elite at Santee Cooper Lakes is sponsored by Minn Kota. Power Pole. Skeeter Boats. And by Rapala. Fishing time left for some of our anglers, maybe a little bit more than that, and uh, maybe a 30, 40 minutes more for the second flight guys out there, but still, you got one objective in mind. Be on that list right there, top 10 only. Advance to Championship Monday. Once again, we draw a Championship Monday. Drew Cook on top for now. No doubt about it, and really, looking at that list, how is Caleb Kufal only catching four bass on Friday? unofficially in our top five right now and with seriously a legitimate shot that four anglers can go past 100 pounds tomorrow which would make suits would spin out oh yeah i already yeah. am thinking about it yeah, do the no, numbers you're, you're rubbing how much your wow, wow, yeah. <laughs> I, I just made a dream come true <laughs> <laughs> 
Let's get out to Cliff Perch again. Cliff Perch needing to make something happen here. Needing to jump a couple yes. of big ones before this day is over. Z with fork on the schedule. We have not had two events that needed 100 pounds to win since 2007. Dang. He's not near as big as he looked. Dang it. Darn it. Inside the mouth. I don't think he helps as much. That's the problem. I was hoping. I was hoping that big female would come back. There's a big female with it. But he is not going to help me. Yeah, I was hoping we could remove that one and put it in the way. I got the Caleb Kufal strong third place right now. Smallest fish in his live wells, four and a half pounds. I love that hook set. He, that's, he, he, he's been holding out, out on that. Wow. Oh, gosh. Come here, buddy. <laughs> Boom! That's a good one. That is a good Big one. Big Bree spawner right there. Mm. Uh, he has a giant, giant stringer today now. <laughs> Gotta give the jig a little action today. It's not just a spinnerbait day. Six and a quarter. Mm. Four on a spinner bait, one on a half ounce homemade jig. Wow. Seven, eight, two six and, and has quarters. Not, and two fives. Has, has not looked at any of them, has fished all day long. That is, that is strong. Back mm. over to Clifford Perch. Got it, got it. Oh, I was hoping it was out there on that stump. Sure enough, it was. Man, that was fortuitous there. If we can get this one in, that one will help us get up there. Got him, that's a little better one. I just thought maybe it had swam out to that stump. Sure enough, it did. That's a little longer one. That's gonna help. It's a little better one. Show it to you. All right. Let's see. Let's put that one in here. Get its head in the water. Let's get a weight. Get rid of one. Definitely one of your bigger fish. Yeah. Not huge, but he'll help. Exactly what Cliff Perch needed right there. That and more may be necessary for him to make it into the top mm. 10. But he may be around him. And this moment, we're going to bring in our buddy Dave Mercer. Dave, when you and Davey took over for the on site coverage about, uh, what, two and a half hours ago, ever since then, it has been an outrageous amount of fish catching. What do you attribute this to? Well, of course, uh, the team of Double D got it done. Sure, no, yeah. we had nothing to do with it. It is exactly what everybody kind of predicted, guys. As the day goes on, it is going to get better, and it has definitely done that. And, man, we've got a supersized semifinal Sunday coming up here, supersized with 47 anglers going out today. So we got to cut it down, and, man, this place is filling up. It's going to be an incredible way in this afternoon. There's people walking around with giant clubs of poultry. It is, uh, it is the carnival is in town, and this one's going to be fun, guys. Dave, in all honesty, 
Drew Cook was in the, and still is in the driver's seat of this tournament, fishing the way he knows how to catch him, sight fishing. Can you remember, though, another tournament that we have had that the leader is sight fishing? But really, if you look at second, third, and fourth, Polinick, Kufal, Luke Palmer, they're actually fishing for the most part. Polinick has caught a few key bed fish. I cannot remember a tournament where it's been th that, at least that much diversity with a person that is sight fishing, where generally you have three or four out of the top five are looking at it. Yeah, I got to agree, Z. And on top of that, generally by this point of the tournament, you see the sight angler start to stumble a little bit and things get a lot tougher, you know, especially Florida events and stuff like that. The first few days, you got a giant sight bite and then it becomes small ball, people weighing in 12 pounds and that sort of thing. There's going to be no small ball here this week. It uh, It's unlike a tournament we've seen in a long, long time and a tournament that was full of lots and lots of changes. I don't think this is going to go sleepy into the night. I, I think that, I mean, obviously, as you see, Drew Cook is going to have to catch him, but it's ridiculous to have the weight that he has and still say, there's a chance somebody could catch him. Dave, this morning you were on the dock and, and we ran that interview that you had with Drew Cook on FS1. And I'm not sure, well, number one, the, the interview was awkward because I, I, I mean this, I, I wasn't sure if having that timeout yesterday where he was in a good mood, a bad mood, I, I, you couldn't gauge what he was feeling this morning when you were talking to him. No, and that's kind of how he is. You know what I mean? He is very even keeled. The only emotion you I've honestly ever seen out of Drew Cook is, excuse the language, but when he gets, or I won't use that term, when he gets angry, when he doesn't catch him, you definitely see it. But he's very even keeled. I think he was lying to me this morning when he said, you know, I want four days to, to try and get a century belt. I think he was the only one out of the 46 other anglers that wanted, of course, four days. And I think he would have been happy with three. But uh, he's going to get a shot at that century belt. And better than that, we're going to have a championship Monday. And Garfield hated Mondays. But Bassmaster fans love them. It is going to be exciting to watch it go down tomorrow. And also with that in mind, you got to imagine that the sight bite will get even better with less pressure on the water from other anglers. I mean, every boat ramp you drive past to get here, they are jammed. I mean, this is prime time in this part of the world, and it is an absolutely spectacular day out here. And if you're not at the Bassmaster weigh-in, you're on the water. A lot of those people will not be on the water tomorrow, so it's going to be interesting to see how that happens. I also found it interesting with Hackney. If you noticed what he said this morning, and he said on the dock, he was like, I haven't sight fished but I think it's just about time to start doing it. So there's definitely game plans and people are changing and uh, everybody's trying to chase down Drew Cook. Dave, uh, we talked about Luke Palmer and, and Caleb Kufal, what they've been able to accomplish today. Caleb, we got to know a little bit during Gunnersville last year. He won that tournament. He's a very soft-spoken guy. So tell us something. We do, what, what's the essential info you need to know about Caleb Kufal? Did, did we get to know him? I mean, he I is a, <laughs> it, 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 it's like one of those mirrors. <laughs> I'll be honest. It's like one of those mirrors. You look in and you're like trying to, to see the other side, but you, you can't, you know, and I'll, he is very mellow. And we say that about some mm -hmm. folks, but you can normally like prod them into something. I mean, Zona and me have pleaded with people to find him a girlfriend. I don't know if he's got a girlfriend yet, but not even that not. brought out does not. kind of he does not. some personal stuff. He does not. I will get him one no. today. Today during weigh-in, we're getting one. him a girlfriend. He said he wants that is one. my goal. Like you're, you're great at doing does stuff he? like that. Does he? Good. Got one more question Good. for he's you, He's getting Dave. a girlfriend at weigh-in. I mean, that's I can guarantee. Him. One last question, Dave. You <laughs> said Garfield hated Mondays. Is Garfield gone? Did I miss something? Well, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I don't watch oh, him okay. anymore. Well, I mean, I'm sure he's still out there. Okay. He's I mean, he hated a lot Mondays like some like other people. I just don't watch him anymore. Okay, Dave, <laughs> thank you so much. Dave Mercer will have it going big time. He will have everything whipped into a frenzy to find out who our 10 are. <laughs> We're going to compete on Championship Monday tomorrow. So, so great. Do we know Caleb Kufal? Do we? <laughs> <laughs> Did we get to know him? God almighty.
wrote an article on Kufal last year after his win and said he fishes, eats, sleeps, plays a little softball, and fishes. He says, fishing, it's all, it's all I've known. I haven't really known much else. Plays a little softball, and he fishes. Yeah. With that hook set, I would think he's a real good, you know, Texas League singles hitter. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Squibber down the third base Exactly, line. exactly. <laughs> you liked that one, didn't you, Suge? I know you did, boy. That last fish got him on bass track that to 30 pounds him, even, cool. Z. With Palmer right behind him or ahead of him. Oh, man. I'm, I, I will tell you, it, it is going to be incredible that the two biggest stringers today, potentially of the event, yeah. are going to come from two dudes that are fishing and fishing very, very close to each other. And, man, I'll tell you right now, Drew Cook is not out of the woods in this tournament. Like, you, we will not have to manufacture drama no, tomorrow. No. Which is a good thing. Unless you're Drew Cook. Now, Drew would like to have this thing locked down at the end of the day. And Absolutely. He has put the work in. And he is so consistent year to year. Just a really top tier guy. Uh, you feel like Drew Cook's going to catch a seven pounder and just shut us up here oh, and me. On a traveling stop. He is locked up on one right now. Boy, and this was the time of day on Friday when a lot of reports we got of big, big female. And don't get me wrong, a lot of them that were coming in on Friday this late were very jumpy and skittish, not set up yet. This was the time of day where things started happening. No, we're not. John Cox on the move. He said it a little while ago. He said it's getting pretty urgent. You're going to need a big one. He's just a little over a pound away from the cut line right now. So uh, John Cox and many others feeling the urgency of the moment. Boy, these guys would like another crack at Santee Cooper. To get it tomorrow would be very, very special. You don't want to miss out, and you don't want to miss the remainder of our live fishing we got coming your way moments from now. Whoa! Whoa! Look at the size of that bass! Live coverage of the Guaranteed Rate Bassmaster Elite at Santee Cooper Lakes is sponsored by Rapala. You have to say it, it's late in the day. On semi-final Sunday here, you got to be in the top ten at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. Beautiful shot in Lake Marion there. Mary and Moultrie make up the Santee Cooper Lakes. Drew Cook on top. Friends, Polinick, and we know, and you just laid it out, Mark Zona, moments ago, a lot can happen in the few remaining minutes. Exactly right, Tommy Sanders. And when you say it's late in the day and the sun's getting low, I called me a big and I let him go. Oh, yeah, Taking a look at what Drew Cook has done, that's right. Yeah. I will incorporate some old school stuff. Some of our old school Bassmaster Live viewers know that fishing show. Drew Cook, flawless today, but boy, his lead, his lead has been chipped into quite a bit by second place angler Brandon Polinick, who has caught more offshore today than we have seen throughout this tournament. 
And this is what's been interesting about Polinick. He only caught one offshore on Friday, but it was this time of day where Brandon Polinick caught two really big ones, one of them over eight pounds. Yeah, with 30 minutes left in the fishing day. Yeah, before that eight pounder came in, it was he was going to drop out of the top ten, and he put yeah, it was a, right back in the thick of it. It was a smarmy day for the majority of the day for Polinick till those big ones locked on. But today, your marathon peak performance, Brandon Polinick said, "If I have any chance at chipping away at Drew Cook's lead, it's going to have to come offshore, and that's relative speaking. His offshore area is about four to six feet of water, Ooh. but he said he knew." He knew in his mind if he was going to catch a 25 to 30 pound stringer, some of that was going to have to come with his front facing Mega Live sonar. Well, today, no joke, Tommy, that spot reloaded in a big way. And we have Brandon Polinick right now with 25 9. And I'm going to say for your marathon peak performance, we're going to end up being very low because there is nothing in his life, well, that size, because they're all that size. Brandon Polinick, everything in his live well has come offshore fishing, suspended jerkbait and a small crankbait. And it has pretty much been all day long. And you look at a guy like Drew Cook who said, man, if I can just catch around 22 to 25 pounds, which he's done, should be in the driver's seat. But it looks like as of right now, Brandon Polinick has chipped away at Drew Cook's lead. Your marathon peak performance, Brandon Polinick with a big morning jump. Going to get up water right now Canadian angler with another solid stringer in his live well Corey Johnston That fish was that big. Where's <laughs> that? Number five. Two in there about 379 or three and three quarters pounds. Gonna have to do a little figuring on that as we take a look at this one. He didn't think it was that big, but it's it's gonna help him. Absolutely. And to the, I'll tell you, man, I was blown away by some of the late bags that came in on Friday. It is gonna be a freak show today. Uh Mercer's gonna combust. <laughs> Yeah, I was stunned because on Bass Track they weren't showing, and then we get 30 bags over 20 pounds. Do Friday. they ever? <laughs> no, I don't know. Once in a while. Good upgrade, you're live. Ooh, that was a good upgrade. Pull up to that bed, and there's like four or five fish on it. Two, the two biggest ones swam off, and that one. Uh, that one I could see there. I didn't think it was that big. I thought it was like a three pounder until I until he jumped. I was like, oh man. 
the males there, it's only like a two pounder, so hopefully these other females come back. Start to get a little more insistent here in the final hour. Exactly, gonna actually just slip right around the corner right here, Clifford Perch. About two and a half pounds outside the cut right now. It's not the big one, but it might help us. And the other one might come back here. Mm, come here. Oh, come here. A strong one. I hope he's as thick as he is strong. There we go. There we go, that's a solid one. Inside the mouth. Nice. A little hand for a worm doing the job here. Okay, now we're getting a little better. A little better, especially if we can get that big one that was in there. Let's get one in here. See what we got there. Three, that's a 310. 310, I will call that one. 310. Clifford may still need a big one. He wants to lock in the top 10. One, you know, Tommy, two, I was thinking about that. What I asked Mercer is back. if you could remember a tournament where the leader was sight fishing, but a lot of the other anglers in the top 10 were actually just fishing fishing the tournament on toledo bend uh that we were the one that perosnik won yeah sight fishing a lot of that's a, yeah, a lot of jerk bait a fish good example yeah yeah Green's got to go. Yellow is still. It's red. Okay. Red goes. Green goes next. Okay. Green goes next. One, two. two. It wasn't a giant one, but it would have probably helped us. Better than we were. There's actually a pretty nice one, and maybe two nice ones swimming around in there. Z, 10th place to, to start today was 42 pounds, 10 ounces. Right now, Drew Benton is 10th with 62.14 on fast track. Yeah. Pretty good cut. And Drew Benton, Drew Benton a lot like his roommate, Drew Cook. They like to low ball him on fast track. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. And several others trying to get in there. Steve Kennedy, Perch among them. Morgan Taylor with a pretty good day, 22 and a half on Bass Track. Drew Cook is not going to rest well tonight. And don't get me wrong, Drew, we gave him at 22, but he has more than that. He's 24 pounds today. Is man there, staring down the barrel of for sure two 30 pound bags. And mm -hmm. Polinick's going to have 27 so right here. just so much that has to go right with the bed fishing like the water's got to stay clean wind can't blow in there they got to be right it's risky business about the top 10. That's the long and the short of it on this day. Make it inside by the end of the weigh-in, which is coming up at 3.30 p.m. Eastern time. Drew Cook right there. We see Paul Nick, Kufal, and all the rest. See? Yeah, and really looking at that, it's going to be one of those weird tournaments where first through 10th on Championship Monday is going to be about a 20-pound gap. Yeah, that's right, which is not as big as it would be someplace else, that's for sure. Drew Benton is sitting on that mark right there, and you say he's notoriously understating his uh, limits yes. through the years. Kennedy, Morgan Taylor, Perch in pursuit. The rest of our 47, hats off to all of them. We haven't made it for the first two days. It's in my final Sunday. We've got a little more to come, so we'll be back in a moment. The Guaranteed Rate Bassmaster Elite at Santee Cooper Lakes is sponsored by Ranger Boats. Yamaha, Toyota, Berkeley, and by Progressive. Hey, thanks to everyone in Clarendon County, South Carolina, for being such a great host county in this case. And being co cooperative in every possible way. We had a bad day yesterday, couldn't fish. They allowed to let us extend through Monday to have our championship Monday. Just a great, great group to work with. And that's the way it stands right now. Our unofficial leaderboard, the top 10 at the end of the way in. If it looks like that, you're in. If you're on that list, we see before our eyes right now. But uh, still time to get some stuff done. Mark Zona, the last 30 minutes of the day is, uh, on day two. We're pretty formidable. Yeah, and we got a lot of anglers right now starting to make their way back to Talk Hawk Creek, John C. Land Landing. But uh, it's fair to say today was one of the finest fish catching days we've had on Bassmaster Live in quite a while. No doubt. One of them trying to claw his way into that top 10. Big day two stringer. Gonna head on the water right now with Clifford Perch live. There's several big others. ones. I don't know which one I should try to catch first, but I've got to get one. Oh gosh. Got him. Got him. He's big. He's big. He's big. Stay out of there. No, 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 no. Not around all that. Come here. Come here, go. Yes, 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 inside the mouth. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Yes. 
Yes, yes, yes. Ooh. Yes, that's the one we've been looking for all day. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Awesome. Good one right there for Clifford Perch. The, I think they call him the Canadian what? Ram Leopard. No, no. I don't gold, no, Golden. Arizona. Uh, Arizona. Golden LA Ram. Ram, I think. Good. Yeah. Right. <laughs> That's exactly it. Good one right there. He only needed like a five, five and a half to get back inside the top ten. So he's there. Well, nine and ten are Hackney and Benton. So. Yeah. They're an ounce apart, but well, I can that's why we say this way is going to be something else. I can tell there's a big yeah, one. Absolutely. And I saw another big one swimming. It's kind of backed into a corner. Oh gosh, it's just chased off something. Come on, I think it's chasing another one off. There's a whole bunch of them. We just found the nest. Oh gosh, there it goes, there goes another one. Come on, big girl. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Oh shoot. Don't swim off like that, don't swim off like that. Oh gosh, there goes another one. Holy smokes, I can't even figure out what's going on here. <laughs> oh gosh, there it is. There it is, it's biting. It just bit something out, there it goes. He tried to bite a, like a mullet or something, whatever that thing was that went by. Here he comes. Here he comes. He's chasing something else. Drew Cook with the one which probably won't play. Not big enough. Uh -huh. Absolutely not help him at all right there. Amazing listening to the snow ram talking about how many fish were on that individual bed. <laughs> The thing you get only with this pure side fishing is a guy at the final moments getting to call a shot, legitimately call a shot and catch yes. one like Clifford did. That's that's what makes it so cool. Absolutely. Still some it's been a sparkling, sparkling day today. Man, I'm just, I'm going to start on that big female that I just left that I, that I couldn't get to bite. Um, that I think I'll be able to catch her if I, uh, you know, first thing in the morning, just throw at her. Um, but I mean, as of right now, we've we've gave up some ground. Um, and I wanted to catch 25 um, at least because of the amount of new fish that moved up. I know I I gave some back today, um, but I also didn't just catch 18 pounds or something like that. So I mean. I did my job, but not as good as I, I could have. Um, but it wasn't from, you know, I, I caught everything I saw except for one. Um, and, you know, and maybe that, that giant one that I saw that for that brief period of time, I mean, it could be on bed tomorrow and we could catch, you know, 37 pounds. Um, I don't know, I mean, I feel like more fish are moving up right now. I think the, the the little bit of cold weather might might hinder it a little bit, but I mean I still I marked I think five or six you know more males today, um, and the wind is not going to blow at all. It's supposed to be light and variable, so that's what killed us today was the wind. Um, I know you saw whenever I was fishing for that last big one. If my boat wouldn't have been swaying back and forth. 
um, from the wind. I believe I could have caught her before I caught the male. Um, but, you know, I hope I'm still in the, in the driver's seat and hope we can get it done tomorrow. Go back. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go with the same program tomorrow. Um, obviously it worked out today, I don't know. We're gonna look at the weather. So I think the, the wind really helped me today. Um, you know, it muddied up a lot of those areas that, uh, that I caught them in with the spinner bait that were pretty clear, I think, the last couple days. I think that was, you know, everything to me, uh, catching those fish was, was water clarity. So yeah, we'll Worthless see what, uh, what we can do tomorrow. I'm excited. Caught a lot of fish today. Stetson blade lock. Might have just caught a key fish in the AOI race. I had a really he was, bad uh, day on Friday, and that could easily happen again. Um, you know, we'll just have to see what happens, and I'm just going fishing. Doesn't seem that excited for catching 30 pounds in his <laughs> life. <laughs> That's like maybe Mercer's right. We don't know we Caleb don't know. yet. Yeah, that may be, you know, a, a super frothy level of excitement for Caleb. For yeah, I know. got 30 pounds in a box. I'm wearing a fur coat and a diaper to the way in. <laughs> <laughs> What a great day. I mean, what we've got day. to see guys catch giants, sight fishing, yeah. blind yes. sight fishing, biting spinner baits at the boat, jigs, everything else. I don't know how we can Phenomenal. do any better than we've done today. No, it's been a really diverse tournament, and uh, just got a feeling tomorrow's going to be a pretty special championship Monday, mm -hmm. man. It is. Uh, this lake shows up every time we've been here. Santee Cooper Lakes, absolutely for real. Unbelievable day on Bassmaster Live. Seen at the John C. Land facility. The weigh in will take place there when? At 3 30 p.m., barely 30 minutes from now, on it right here on Bassmaster.com. Check that out. We will know who our 10 finalists are if we're going for that third blue trophy of the, of the year. Likely to see a century oh, yeah. belt. We'll be coming back your way tomorrow morning. 8 o'clock Eastern Time, right here on Bassmaster.com. I will say, we had a little bit of timeouts and fish catching on days one and two. That was not the case today. After our midday break, this lake absolutely, you know, no, no, this lake exploded Whoa, all here. day long. Come here. Come here. Oh, there we go. It's one of those three and a half when. Oh, it's like you say, Mercer may implode at the weigh-in. It is going to be so tight. It is going to be so tense, so exciting, so much fun at that weigh-in. You definitely want to stick around for that. 3.30 p.m. We will see yes. you at 8 a.m. tomorrow. Something like that. But you're freaking welcome. Yeah.